Welcome to the Scam Economy with your host, Matt Bender. Everybody and welcome to the Scam Economy Post Show. Uh, I am your host, Matt Bender, and I am here to tell you all about, to tell you all about, to talk to you all about crypto, NFTs, Web3, or none of the above. We could literally shoot the shit. It's the Post Show. Uh, you and I can talk about anything and everything. What is going on with my green screen? It's not It's not doing a good job right now. I don't know what's happening. Um, but while I fix with that, fix fix whatever issue this, this is, um, I will say hello, everyone. Um, so yes, if you're a regular live stream viewer of mine, um, you know that I usually uh, do Doomed on Tuesday nights. But I was sick last week. Um, right after doing Tuesday's Doomed, I got pretty sick. And so I didn't get to do the Scam Economy episode last week. I'm a bit of a mess. Excuse me while I fix my chair, my, my camera. Why am I out of the frame? There we go. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Megan Anaconda says, Mega Anaconda, excuse me, says Binance is still up and running for now. Um, so I was sick. I was there was a, a night where I was just uh, or two actually last week where I was just in bed, uh, and just could not do a live stream. I had a fever. All the kids got sick too. My daughter was sick before me, and then my son got sick after me. Um, so it was it was hell here. And I had this episode of Scam Economy I recorded with uh, Molly literally right before the New Year. Right before 2020, it became 2023. And it needs to go up. It needs to go up. It's a great episode, honestly. I thought Molly was great, um, as always. But I especially enjoyed uh, episodes talking about multiple things. <laughs> and not just focusing on one. Uh, short attention span here. Uh, and so uh, I needed to get this Scam Economy episode up. I needed to get Scam Economy going. Not covid my uh, Spaco, not COVID. I tested, we tested, not COVID, not the flu either. Um, just something going around. I got no idea. Um, my hair is a mess. What is going on with this green screen? Is it the light? Is it too? Is it too bright? Why does it keep doing that? Um, anyway. <laughs> um. Anyway, I decided to do Scam Economy tonight, get Scam Economy kicking off already this year, and then I will let you all know about Doomed. I'm going to reach out to a few people and um, see what their schedule is like, and then we'll do Doomed whenever. Uh, yeah. Uh... Matt says, Molly is a, Matthew says, Molly is a legit genius. This is legit a genius. The perfect person to talk about this stuff. Yeah, she's great. I, I want to have her on more often. Um, let's take a call. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, hello? All right. That's weird. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Matt. Josh from California. How are you doing tonight? Hey, hey, Josh from California. I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing pretty well. Thank you. What you uh, what, have you been you following? Talk? Yeah, speaking of this, uh, of a scam economy, have you been following the uh, drama behind um, WWE's board? Yes, and I spoke about that. When did I speak about that? Oh, someone I am into Majority Report on Thursday when I was on. Um, and uh, I'm surprised I was able to do that. I almost uh, didn't because I was sick. But <laughs> I decided to, to pull through and do the Majority Report. Um, and 
Yeah, I spoke about that there. What would you like to? T- we could talk about it a little bit here. What would you like to uh, talk about? So he ch- he changed the bylaws again today, <clears throat> so that he essentially doesn't have to get approval from the shareholders for a sale. And I guess he's getting sued again about this, but essentially he changed it today so that he can just sell it without putting it up for a vote. Like he gets to, he gets to vote and his 80% or whatever, and then just like, it's done. It doesn't have to go to a meeting. He is, he is, uh, I mean, he's incredible. Uh, and, and not, I don't mean it in a, in a, in a, in a, <laughs> in, a in a good way. I mean, um, it is amazing what has happened in the WWE in just the past couple of uh, days, really. A week, I guess, or two. Um, so, uh, a quick summary for those who don't know. Uh, Vince McMahon of WWE, he was forced out of the company. He was the you know, chairman and CEO. Um, basically, his company, he bought it from his father decades ago. Um, and immediately the- broke the promise to his father that he wouldn't expand. Right, right. So over right. Uh, so over the summer, Wall Street Journal had this blockbuster story about uh, unauthorized payments sent from him to uh, various women who, um, you know, he he. It's uh, I can't remember if uh, uh, I mean exactly what the the allegations were, but so uh, I got that one. He uh, go ahead. since he was using company funds to pay off a variety of um, personal assistants uh, or secretaries. I think the first one was a secretary back when they were called secretaries, but he's been doing this for for decades. Essentially, he's been using company funds to pay off uh, women who were in close proximity to him in, in business operations that he would either sexually assault or have consensual relationships with but you're the bot like you're the ceo so it's never really consensual because you get fired if you say no type of a relationship um and that i mean he has those kinds of like the you get fired if you say no relationship with everyone who's ever been around him so (laughs) so the threat was was there very you know it wasn't implicit it was pretty explicit it was like you displease vince mcmahon you're fucking out of here so uh for for any position so right. for these women and there's it, been also there's been allegations against him of assault and straight up rape for many years now going mm-hmm. back to um the 80s um and so you know so he he resigns and uh. Everyone thinks this is the end of the era of Vince McMahon running the WWE. I mean, the dude is, geez, how he's almost eighty now. Is is he eighty? He's eighty one, maybe eighty two, something. He maybe he's early eighties. I think. Yeah. Either set like very late seventies or early eighties. Yeah, I can't remember which. I can't remember if he's seventy eight or eighty one. Okay, like. he's he he's seventy seven. Okay, yeah. seventy seven. So everyone thought, that's it. He's retired. He said he was retiring. Uh, his daughter came back to the company after taking some time off to become co-CEOs with another big executive the WWE brought on board. And his son-in-law, known to everyone as Triple H, takes over the creative. So basically both of Vince McMahon's I, jobs sorry. taken some, over. Some people know him as the man with three H's. It's just, right. Just Okay. <laughs> so just, anyway, just that, that anyway, anyway, um, fast forward to a couple weeks ago, all of a sudden there's a press release welcoming, but from Vince McMahon himself, not even directly from the company, um, saying he's back on the board. And lo and behold, he forced his way back on the board weeks and weeks and weeks, months and months and months after he retired. And uh, Mm. numerous people on the board were forced out. And then he becomes chairman of the board. And then his daughter, Stephanie McMahon, suddenly resigns from the company and leaves completely. Um, And basically, Vince McMahon is back. 
He's forced his way back into the company. Um, he was easy for him to do that because he's still the majority shareholder. I believe he owns like 80% of the shares. And so the whole he, owns, reason, he owns 40% of the shares, but the way that... the voting power? Yeah. So when they set, essentially what they did is when they set up the... Uh, when they went public, they set it up so that the McMahon family has these Class B shares that have... 10 times the voting power of a normal a normal um, share. So he owns 40% of the stock, but somehow has over 80% of the voting power. Ah, right, right. So what you <laughs> said. <laughs> because yeah, rich what people you always protect themselves. Right. And the except reason. Except tech nerds. Right. <laughs> who don't know what they're doing when they get fucked by venture capitalists. But that's right. a whole other thing. Well, compared to the venture capitalists, they're not the rich people, uh, usually. There are, uh, obviously, uh, a few uh, outliers. Um, anyway, and the reason Vince McMahon is back is because the WWE is looking into selling the company. Um, and the night this all went down, there was a strong rumor that the Saudi fund was buying the WWE. That seems to be a, a rumor right now, although an unsubstantiated rumor, although they are definitely one of the firms who are interested in buying the WWE, leading the pack. Others apparently are Comcast, Disney, Fox, and even, this one's very interesting, very interesting, the cons, uh, uh, Tony Khan and his father... Uh, they own the uh, NFL team, the Jaguars, and they own the WWE's biggest competition, All Elite Wrestling, AEW. Now, it would be beyond insane to see a much, much, much newer wrestling company buy out the WWE, but I guess that's a possibility. Yeah, I think that would be the end of major wrestling in the United States, though, because I think he'd like end up burning himself out that, that company's way too large for him to run for tony khan to do his like hands on everything run running it um yes. i think he i mean i oh it's so weird i was talking with someone earlier today about how how bizarre it is that like tony khan looked at the WWE storylines and thought the biggest problem was the writers completely missing out what the real issue has always been with the WWE and then replicating it to the extreme in AEW. And you see it in the storylines. Like, I love AEW, love the wrestling, love the talent, but they have the same storyline problem as WWE has. A single guy is looking at the final product written down, the final script, and having complete control over what we actually end up seeing on TV. And mm. that's what happened to WWE. They'd have writers write an entire script. They would go to Vince. And then that night, hours before they're supposed to go on TV, the dude is rewriting the entire thing, basically throwing out everything the writers put together. Now, AEW doesn't have writers because they think the reason WWE sucks with storylines is because they have writers. So instead, Tony Khan books the entire show. It makes zero sense. That's the problem with WWE. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's nuts, and it, a lot of it is just because they do, you know, because it worked when you were a regional company or whatever 50 years ago. They think, oh, well, we don't need a, a storyboard or any of the, it's, you know, like any of the conventions that, like, sitcoms and, and dramas figured out, like, I mean, seven, they, 50 they, years they, ago. They just need more than one person thinking the storylines through. It's very simple. It's very simple. Get, well, none of these yeah, companies seem to be able to get this right. <laughs> they also need a show Bible. It's like, oh, yeah, no, this guy fought this guy like six months ago. He should probably reference that when they have a match next yes. week. Yes, they never do. It's like it's like you have a You literally have the one um, uh, uh, scripted TV show that does not have to worry about seasons, doesn't have to worry about getting canceled, doesn't have to worry about fi fitting it all into 14 episodes before the next season starts. Literally, 52 weeks a year, 
every year nonstop, never have to worry about <laughs> fitting things in during a certain time frame. Multiple shows on TV too, not just one uh, one hour show. WWE has one three hour show, one two hour show, another two hour show. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then there's pay per views every month. Mm -hmm. And they literally act like they need to wrap up storylines from one pay per view to the next pay per view and start anew for the next, for the following pay per view. Never referencing anything, never uh, letting people feud for more than a, a month or two. Very bizarre. Very bizarre. And well, AEW and has the same problems. It's so weird because they never – that didn't – that's not how they used to do it. It's, that was one of the things I, that WWF was great at. I remember Hulk Hogan, waiting a year for Hulk Hogan and Sting to finally wrestle after literally every single WCW Monday Night Nitro would end with mm -hmm. Sting – Fighting off the NWO led by Hulk Hogan single-handedly as Diamond Dallas Page and Ric Flair and Lex Luger and all the other WCW guys were getting the shit kicked out of them. Every week the show ended that way with Sting coming in and then finally building up to Sting versus Hulk Hogan, WCW versus NWO. I mean, the, the, the big match didn't pay off at all, but the point being... <laughs> they built it up for a year before finally giving it to us. Yeah. Why don't they do that anymore? Be I don't know. I, they must have some sort of metrics that say the fans don't want, don't pay attention that long or whatever. But the like, fans when don't Hogan... want storylines with long-term thinking. I doubt that. I don't believe that. They, they. I mean, it must be. I mean. I, can't, I, I agree with you. I don't believe it, but they must have something that tells them that people don't want that anymore. Or maybe they're too worried about injuries or something like that. But yeah, Hogan and um, Randy Savage with when they fought over Miss Elizabeth or whatever, that was like a year long storyline. And that was like from one WrestleMania to the next. It was, you know, right. one of their biggest selling WrestleManias ever. Right. Did you see the sad news, by the way, about who just passed away? I did. Yeah, that's a car yeah. accident. Oh my that's god. Yeah. So, so again, I don't know how many people here are wrestling fans, but uh, Jay Briscoe, thirty-eight years old, uh, long-time wrestler, has been wrestling since. Geez, he must have been in his teens, and I don't mean like eighteen. I mean, dude must have started training fifteen, sixteen. I don't know, but he's been the face of probably uh, what has been the third biggest wrestling promotion uh over the past like two decades um and he just passed he died in a car accident day really shocking i mean this is a guy too who um who uh had said some very bad horrific things over the years he he certainly um you know seemed to have his issues i mean the reason he never got signed to any bigger company uh, was because of these various issues. But he also was a guy who seems to have really, um, you know, we talk about someone actually cha learning and changing and, and apologizing and meaning it over the years. Like this dude has, from all, everything I've heard, uh, has completely did a 180 on like uh, some of his, uh, you know, his beliefs uh, back in the day. You know, he said homophobic things a couple, uh, like a decade or two ago. Um, but this is a dude who seems to have really turned things around, has been the face of Ring of Honor, um, easily going to be remembered as one of the best tag team wrestlers of all time. Out of the out of the teams who never made it to the WWE or AEW or any of the big two promotions over the years, easily the best tag team uh, who's never made it to one of those companies, easily. Yeah, yeah, and supposedly the, his comments were a big part of, even though he had, you know, over time tried to atone for them supposedly that was a large part of why he never they never got signed anywhere but i don't i don't know if that's true right uh, right yeah i mean it, uh, yeah very, very sad very sad the car yeah. accident i watched that dude do some crazy ass shit that you like literally people would chant like please don't die at him because of how crazy some of the flips to the outside of the ring and dives and just bumps they would take even in the ring on their neck and everything like Jesus Christ. It's so crazy. 38 years old.
Yeah, yeah, and I have feelings about a lot of the bumps that these guys take. I think it's, especially on free TV, it's ridiculous. Like, it's one thing yeah. if it's on pay-per-view and you're, you, it's a huge match or whatever, but, like, I don't know. A lot of the, like, they had uh, the women bleeding, like, all over the place on a show that 3,000 people, or 300,000 people were watching last Friday night or whatever. It was just... Like, if you're going to do that, at least save it for a pay-per-view match. But, right. yeah. I, 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 think that was, uh, I think that was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> I hope That so. looked like that was the blade job gone wrong. I hope so. But um, the other thing, and you're right, it is very sad. Like, it's he had six kids, I think, something like that. It's just... Oh, he had six kids? I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Um, Man, that's that's rough. Yeah, that's it's it's very brutal. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I moving on to a slightly less or a slightly more entertaining topic. I hope. <laughs> um, did you see the uh, how the World Economic Forum um, has basically said that they haven't invited Musk since 2015? Like he tweeted about it very recently that he didn't want to go because it seemed boring and they're like nobody asked you to fucking come dude wait what happened so elon musk tweeted about how he uh didn't want to go to the we the world economic forum in davos because it seemed boring af oh and, okay <laughs> and the world economic forum is like we haven't invited you since 2015. Like, what's going on? Oh, they here? said something to him? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, they responded to that. They said, uh, we had invited him a couple of times over the years, but not since 2015, because he, we didn't feel he had anything to add. <laughs> so... 2015, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh... Uh yeah, I mean, listen, I'm no fan of what's uh, going on in in Davos, but that's a pretty big. Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's no, a pretty big. Uh, it's pretty, it's pr pretty big own, right? <laughs> and then one of his because uh, you know you released... know he cares about like he's gonna pretend that oh to to uh, you know to to pander to the anti vaxxers and the right wingers that like he is disgusted at what's going on over there. But you well, know, you know he's into that shit because he's a weird rich person. Oh, no, it, it has to burn him up. There's absolutely no way it doesn't just burn him. Like, why do why don't the cool, cool billionaires want me to hang out with them? <laughs> but that coupled with the tweet about Soros where he's did you I don't know if you saw that one where he's uh oh, about the boot licking thing yeah the yeah cartoon yeah. yeah so that might be why he's leaning into the anti-semitism because you know supposedly the the Jews run the world economic forum in in conspiracy world so that might be why he's talking about Soros now but uh the I other mean, thing did you see did you see that report that apparently uh Twitter this just came out now. Uh, uh, Twitter's revenue. This is from uh, Zoe Schiffer of Platformer. Um, we learned today that Twitter's revenue is down 40% year over year. Oh, and that's... Musk's first giant interest payment on the company is due at the end of the month. Yeah, so this is not economic advice but or uh, financial advice. But if you have money to short uh, Tesla, this might be a good time. <laughs> Cause he's I was I was also I was also yes that go ahead to say, what, what were you gonna say I don't want to you were gonna bring it up so I don't want to interrupt you oh the they just testified today uh, or I, I I read about it today I don't know actually this but they were test testifying about the full self driving and how when they were uh, it was in a deposition about full self driving and how when they did a demo in 2016 how many takes they had to do of the of the filming and how they had to, they used a, uh, 3d map to program the AI ahead of time so that it could drive from, um, Jesus, I'm trying to remember. It was, uh, 
from somewhere close to Palo Alto to Palo Alto, uh, from a house in Menlo Park to Tesla's headquarters, which oh. is probably Hello? 10. Yes, can you hear me? Oh, you just disappeared. That was weird. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. So it was a, they were trying to drive from a Oh, you disappeared in... again. What's going on? Hello? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear Let you me... now. Yeah, that was weird. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Yeah, so they were trying to drive from a uh, house in Menlo Park to Tesla's headquarters in Palo Alto, which is about a 15-minute drive. And so essentially they had to do all this pre-programming um, to ensure that it worked, and it still failed a bunch of times. Like they had to get human intervention uh, like five or six different times um, for a 15-minute drive. And this is in 2016, but this was the the demo video that they said, well, full self-driving is here. So it's basically it's fraud um, <laughs> and that it, it couldn't even park itself like they were like Musk was saying that they could. So this is all like a lawsuit that I was just reading today about uh, um, they've been doing depositions with like the, the engineers that worked on the project uh, and it was on NBC news. So they're going to be in even more trouble. Uh, I think it's related to that private financing tweet where they just deposed like everybody involved in, in the, in Tesla at an engineering, in an engineering position, like around full self-driving at that point. But it's, he's, they're in trouble is <laughs> for a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch. It'll be fun to watch what happens. Yes, yeah. Especially, like, I, I have to deal with uh, a lot of conservatives who are like, oh, it's such good value to buy Tesla right now because I work, I work in Silicon Valley. And so they're like, it's such a good deal to buy Tesla stock right now. It's going to go back up. And yeah, it's like, yeah. mm, uh, they're still, they're not it's worth great, more than Toyota, buddy. It's a great deal. It's a great deal. got a great deal for you. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. The other thing? <laughs> Thank you so much for the call. Always a pleasure to talk with you, Josh. Have a great, yeah, uh, ha have a great night. Talk to you soon. You too. Bye. Bye. All right. Let's take this call. Oh, there's some, uh, there's some, uh, super chat. Let me read these super chats first. As always, you drop a super chat. I'll read super chats. Sam Dankman weed. That's a great username. R.I.P. Jay Briscoe condolences to his family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, boy. A bunch of calls. Come on. Right, let's take another call. A bunch of calls coming in. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Charlie from Washington again. Hey, Charlie. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. What's up? Uh, nothing much. Uh, oh, geez. Give me a second. I blanked for a second. Uh, okay. So I was watching uh, a video from Bo the Fifth Column. He's a really good channel. By the way, if, if nobody in the chat seen him, go go watch his stuff. But he was doing a video about, about when people say that both parties are the same. He was kind of going over why they might say that and why that's not necessarily accurate. And he, he basically he covered the political positions on there. And I went into uh, the comments afterwards to kind of add to that a little bit because if you're one of the marginalized groups both parties aren't really the same at all uh you know one side likes to give worthless platitudes until they're pressured into doing the right thing eventually kind of maybe a little bit tepidly and the other party's constantly attacking them and you know i mentioned you know all of, all, all of the min minorities who get attacked and i brought up that they're trying to legislate my community out of existence and I got a lot of pushback from that. That kind of bothers me a little bit. So I've been trying to think about like all day, how you're going to talk to somebody, especially if they're a centrist or kind of a normie and they're not really up on these issues all around. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I thought it might be worthwhile to try and swap up tactics and maybe give them a, a tell them what's at stake a little bit. So, um, I, I thought I might kind of let loose here. One of the big things, there, there are lots of things, but one of the big things that uh, m makes it so that I know that uh, I made the right choice when I did this. So for 
all of my life, uh, whenever I looked into a mirror, I, I had this huge phobia of mirrors. And whenever I looked into a mirror, I got that feeling that you get when you see a malicious stranger, some, some, somebody that you know for a fact wants to harm you. And like, I always had this weird feeling like it wanted to kill me and replace me. It's a really weird thing. You know, I always thought I was crazy and I never knew where it came from. Right. So a month and a half into HRT, I look in the mirror and that feeling, not only is that feeling gone, just completely gone, it hasn't come back ever. But like, I, I just smile for with no effort, no thought to want to smile. It just happened. And it occurred to me like, all my life, I actually kind of had to put effort into smiling, even at things that I liked, which is really kind of weird, but there's a really good feeling. And that's what they're trying to take away from kids. So, you know, uh, you know, kind of an important thing. I'm going to go back and like some of the people who push back in that comment section, I'm going to respond to because I, I view that as good practice. You know, I, I kind of have this thing where uh, this rule where I don't take comments off the Internet seriously unless I hear it spilling over it in real life. And some of the shit I'm hearing spill over into real life, you know, uh, oh, you're trying to push your delusions on us or you're experimenting on kids, that kind of crap. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of wanted to say that. Oh, also, uh, did you hear about uh, Scotland? Oh, I did. Yeah. But why don't you yeah. why don't you tell us about it just so uh, uh, everyone listening could know and being that you brought it up makes sense for you to talk about it. Well, basically, Scotland came uh, they, with like seventy percent approval. They voted into this law to make it easier for people to um, change their gender, basically on like paperwork. I think I, I don't know all of the details on it. And then London Par Par uh, English Parliament, God damn it, brain English Parliament decided that they're going to veto it and they're using something that like they've never used for like literally anything and Scotland's pissed about it like loads of people are pissed about it so uh the united kingdom might tear itself apart over transphobia which just goes to show you what kind of a brain worm it is like seriously hey i mean uh it's uh it would be quite something to see that be the reason why <laughs> The, yeah, UK, I guess, the, U, like, the UK ends being uh, stops being the UK. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess there's more support brewing for Scottish independence. Like there wasn't as much last time they did. It was kind of 50-50, I guess. But I guess there's uh, a lot more support. And their Supreme Court or whatever the equivalent is over there is like, no, once in a generation is, is enough. And like God only knows what that means as somebody pointed out. Yeah. But like, you know, fucking go Scotland. I, I've never been prouder, which is silly to be proud of, but I've never been prouder to have a Scottish surname. Oh, you're Scott. That's even that's even extra cool. Well, I mean, I've, I've born and raised in Washington, lived here all my life. But my, my last name is Scottish. It's, it's common it's a Scottish last name. But, you know, I, I like it. It makes my name sound regal. Like I have a long beginning, middle and uh, last name. So there you go. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah I, I just kind of wanted to bring that up no thanks so much for the call and for bringing the, I mean I always like hearing your what you bring to the show yeah I, I like trying to be a regular I think it's good for me <laughs> no, good. that's even better listen if this show is helping you then that's great yeah but thank, thank you very much have a good night and you too always like when Charles calls in Always bring something, um, always bring something interesting. I heard about the Scotland thing, but I, I honestly was not prepared to talk about it today. Hey, what's your name? Where you, excuse me. What's your name? What do you want to talk? Uh, oh hello? my God. Hello. Hey, what's your name? Where are you from? That's what uh, this for. is Osama. Oh, I forgot to bring Charles up on the screen, and you just reminded me by... I don't know why I didn't see his... <laughs> I see your video now. Want me to bring up on the screen? Yeah, sure. And who's this? Osama. Oh, Osama. Oh, oh, there you are. <laughs> yes, okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> How you doing, my friend? What would you like to talk about? Where are you, by the way, now? Canada, US? I'm still US? in North Carolina. No, still in North Carolina. Completing my, yeah, I'm completing my master's, so two years. 
Oh, right, right, One right. One and a half left. I forgot why you were I there. Need to, <laughs> I need to get you a Discord server or something. <laughs> I have a Discord myself. server. I'm just really bad at using it. Listen, I'm going to get all this shit together. I've had people... <laughs> I, I listen, no, because, there's a few, there's a few th- I'll, I'll talk about it later at the end yeah, of the yeah. episode, but there's a few things I gotta, I gotta, you know, uh, because uh, Skype doesn't have like a priority list, like a waiting list you can join or like, I'll just wait, chill out or something. Yeah. I know people keep pressing the call. I know it sucks. I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so what did uh, you talk about? That's fine. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess a couple of things, but yeah, the first caller talked about WW and all that, right? Yeah, I'm uh, just yeah. I'm so sick of Vince McMahon. Like, why can't he just go? Away? I mean, he did for a couple of months, then he came back because he didn't want the company. No, no, to he was sold. supposed to go away, and then he was like, I guess in in the six months he was like, wait, wait a minute, I own the majority of the stocks. Well, I, I can actually, do whatever I want. I actually heard that he was upset that he was told to, you know, he was sort of convinced yeah, yeah. to leave, um, yeah, and and that he thought after he when he was home thinking about it. He decided that if he just waited it out, the whole thing would have blown over and he would have been able to stay. Which is right, because next week, uh, Rick Flair is coming back. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. It just blows over. <laughs> There's no consequences. Cancel There's... culture isn't real. <laughs> no, they're really, you're absolutely right. When it comes to yeah. pro wrestling, you could, you, they're, yeah. 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 It's too uh, bad. But uh, you, you mentioned like uh, long term storytelling, right? Right. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I wanted to talk about like this whole Sami Zayn bloodlines storyline that's been going on. We were talking and about I'm like, there, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm like, Vince McMahon might ruin it. <laughs> it was building up, it uh, going to like a really good conclusion months and months. Maybe like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens beat the Usos for the tag titles, or Sami Zayn. I I want this to happen, but I don't think it will beats Roman Reigns finally like dethrones him or something in the end because we all know it'll implode like Roman Reigns is manipulating Sami Zayn but now that Vince McMahon is back he might just take over creative and then just <laughs> I don't know have horn struggle beat Roman Reigns I I uh, think I think the 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 Sami Zayn angle has been one of the best things they've done in a long time yeah and it's because like He's been so good. Like I've known it, and a lot of people have known it for since like his NXT days and before that, like El Generico and all that. But uh, because of Vince McMahon, these people kept getting ignored, and nothing really happened. And now yeah. he's she's back. Right. <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, it, and the, uh, Josh yeah. points out that Bloodline started under Vince. Yes, but the Sami Zayn stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah because him becoming him becoming the uh, sort of sort of the star of the storyline, not the star of the stable. Yeah. That's Roman, but I mean yeah. he's he's taking the leading role in in moving the storyline forward. Uh, that did uh, yeah. not happen under Vince. Yeah, because Vince was like, "Ah ha ha! Look at this funny guy. He's gonna do some antics. He's gonna try to defeat Roman Reigns, and in a few weeks it'll be over or something like that, right? But yeah. then, uh, but then Triple H takes over, and he's like, "Oh, like he knows because he's." dealt with Sami Zayn. Everyone loves Sami Zayn, so why not make this a permanent thing? Why not, like, uh, have some emotion involved, Kevin Owens, all that other stuff? And, like, that last fight on, on Friday, I did not expect that. I thought Kevin Owens would just beat him, and then Roman Reigns would get angrier and ang- angrier or something. But Sami Zayn was, was about to win, and they just DQ'd and everything. That was insane. I missed that one. I missed it. I have to catch up on oh. some of the. Yeah. Did I spoil it? No, no, because I, I, it's. I'm at the point. I used to listen. I used to watch all. I used to watch Raw, SmackDown, yeah. NXT, the pay per views, all the AEW shows, but then yeah. I got rid of. I got rid of cable, um, <laughs> and so I don't watch it live. So I basically watch it through clips, and oh, okay. uh, when you do uh, yeah, that, you miss in things. The middle. Yeah. Uh, I, I I just use some websites, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, but then with the whole... Uh, I used to watch... I still watch this review show called... Uh, you know about World Culture Wrestling, right? They have this guy called Simon Miller. He, oh, yes, uh, he's yes. a pretty fun guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I just watched his shows for a bit. Like, I stopped watching and watched his review shows. <laughs> They're pretty fun. But yeah, uh, other than that, like... 
Briscoes, the Briscoe you were talking about is from the Briscoe brothers, right? The ones that defeated FTR recently. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, that's sad. I don't know much about the guy, but like the the match, at least the matches I saw of him was they were awesome. Yeah, they were insane. I I was very lucky. I was a big Ring of Honor fan, and did not have kids at the time. Uh, during yeah. the the late two thousands, when Ring yeah. of Honor was really taking off. And uh, they were, uh, you know, uh, doing show regular shows at the Hammerstein Ballroom in Manhattan. Um, they were doing shows at a few different places in Long Island, and I was basically going to like every single one that was in the area. I even uh, took a trip down to uh, uh, you know to Philly, to Connecticut a, f- a few times uh, to catch. Specific Ring of Honor shows, and I got to see Kevin yeah. Owens, Sami Zayn oh. when he was El Generico, um, uh, Daniel <laughs> da, uh, uh, Brian Danielson, Nigel Ma- <laughs> Nigel McGuinness, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe. Oh. Like this was peak Ring of Honor. I, I yeah, yeah, just missed crazy. out on the CM like CM Punk had just left when I got really really into Ring of Honor, but everyone else was still there. Uh, uh, Chris Hero. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Claudio Casagnoli, aka Cesaro, Seth Rollins, uh, who was Tyler Black at the time, uh, um, Eddie this, Kingston, probably. Eddie Kingston, yes, Eddie Kingston. That's insane. <laughs> um, yeah, like these, these were the these were the Ring of Honor guys. Oh, uh, how am I forgetting? Uh, uh, Brody, uh, Brody Lee, R.I.P. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, these were guys I was seeing. Week after week, live, and I'm in my That's like, I'm in my like uh, how old was I then? Jesus, um, uh, yeah. very, very early 20s. Um, and it was, it was, uh, and, crazy yeah. shit, crazy. These guys were doing things yeah. that you now see on TV, but were, were not yeah. on TV then, and still they were doing yeah, crazier course. shit, with, like, uh, yeah, yeah, with violent violence, like the caller was talking about. I'm fine with violence, like if they do it, like if you do it in a controlled manner, it looks gr- gr- gruesome, but of course it hurts, but not that badly. But of course things can go bad. And when people talk about blood with women, I'm like, you have no problem when John Moxley bleed, bleeds in every match, basically. So I'm, I'm a bit like uh, iffy on that. Like, why is it like when the women bleed, it's a problem? But that there was a nasty bump. Uh, I think someone missed the table or something. That was yeah, I, like, I, that that clearly looked like a, a botched. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, obviously, like usually you have like two tables, so both can just go through them, but they only had one, so they they just missed. Right. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. The, the the way the blood was coming down her face looked like. Uh, I I I I missed. I haven't seen. The I match think the yet. blood was like like a blade or something because yeah. while she was in the that was game. that was a messed up blade job then or or someone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess uh, because uh, she's not used to it. Women don't like usually bleed. Uh, yeah. like the most they bleed is like what Bianca Belair did, where she's like bleeding through the mouth, but it was, like dry or I something. I mean, personally, I think I think the whole blading thing is, it should be done with. I'm not a fan. Uh, of, yeah, yeah, I'm not but, a fan. Oh, but fan. but speaking of blading, do you remember when Brock Lesnar like hard opened Randy Orton like he was just punching him yeah. again and again? That was insane. Yes. But uh, yeah, I think they could use blood capsules. Like, why not bleed through the mouth? You're using blood capsule. That's fine. Who cares? Uh, but yeah, uh, the and the chair shots to the head. They, those are like well, those w- are pretty AEW. much. Those are pretty much done. Yeah, but AEW is like. Throw, like they don't directly do it, but they do it, hit people in the head in weird ways, and like they yeah, don't do that. Uh, like you know, throwing the chair so it just hits the head or something weird like that, uh, which isn't like uh, don't go that far. Yeah, but you're talking about like one person writing the storyline. Yeah, uh, I guess that is a big issue. Uh, okay, but beyond wrestling, uh, the, I gotta start. I gotta start a wrestling uh, show. So many people call in, and ask me yeah. wrestling questions. Maybe I gotta start a wrestling show. Uh, I wish I could st- I, I could be part of a wrestling show just for the insanity of like wrestlers and their world. Oh no! I mean, people. I mean, I gotta do a podcast. I don't. I, I mean, <laughs> actually, it's been a, it's been a dream of mine to do an actual wrestling yeah. show, like a indie. Yeah, that would be insane. But I don't that have the insane. I don't have the money for that. Yeah, I yeah. can't imagine. I mean, um, yeah. I, I know there are small indie feds that do it, 
And I, I, yeah. I've heard that some of them have pretty small budgets, but I can't imagine paying these guys. Yeah, uh, that's, like like that's a small odd. like I can't imagine paying these guys. Like I, you hear indie shows, and some of these guys make a hundred bucks, a few hundred, less yeah. less than that sometimes if they're brand yeah. new and local. Uh, the stars, yeah. some, not, I don't want to say stars, but some of the bigger names who do indies, like five hundred, yeah, make like five hundred. Like I feel like. This is a job where, like, one wrong move and these guys can be paralyzed. That doesn't seem like enough yeah, money. Yeah, that's hard. I would feel, I feel so it bad. It would be paying. insane, though. Not like uh, maybe not even having a show, like just being part of it or something. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, if I had a, if I won the lotto, the first thing I would do is start a wrestling promotion because yeah. then I'd have the money yeah, to pay like, these guys. <laughs> like, like a, a dream would be like Stone Cold, Cold stunning me or something. Right, right, uh, right. But yeah, yeah. I, always said, I always said like, because I, I booked a lot of shows, uh, like punk shows, hardcore shows, like music shows back in the day. Yeah. And I would like, you know, rent venues or, or partner with venues or work with venues in all different ways. I would book bands, put a whole lineup together, book touring bands, things like that. And, you know, uh my utmost respect to musicians and everything. I played in a band yeah. myself, but you know, if it was a, a show with a low turnout and you pay a band, uh, you know, whatever you could pay them, it's a lot different in the punk scene, especially where everyone's used to, you know, just playing yeah. for the love of it. I did that many times. We barely ever got paid for playing shows. Um, yeah. but like, you know, that's a different thing. Like I, I'm not going to go on stage the odds of me going on stage and playing bass and uh, walking home, uh, uh, leaving that night in a wheelchair, with the broken very, neck low, very low, very like, low. Yeah, like that's yeah, very low. Odds like, one of these guys to happen to one of these guys. I mean, it's very yeah. high. It's very high. It could happen. So like with Cody Rhodes and the Peck and like the, I think Champa's injured. I don't know with what. Uh, and Daniel Bryan for four years or something. Edge for seven years. Uh, and if you don't make it big before that, then what do you do? Like a fast food worker or something? I don't know. But yeah, uh, beyond wrestling, like... Uh, oh, I got to answer this Donald James was... question. Wait, before we move on from wrestling, I got to yeah. ask this Donald James question. <laughs> Donald James yes. says, what kind of wrestler would Matt be if he were one? You don't think I've thought this out meticulously <laughs> over the years? <laughs> I already can tell you. That's what every wrestling fan thinks. I, of. Well, I was also I did backyard wrestling uh, back in yeah. like high school with my friends, like really well thought out storylines, full blown scripting the matches. We all had characters and yeah. stuff. I would be because I'm small, so I can't be. I can't yeah. be like I would be a powerhouse. I'd be like yeah, a, no, course. like I can't be like I'm gonna be like a Brock Lesnar or a Kane or Big Show. No, no. But I'm yeah. not also very. I'm not also. I can I. I wish I was acrobatic, but I'm not. So I can't be yeah. a high flying cruiserweight either. So I've already yeah. planned out. I would be a Dean Malenko style mat technician. Yeah. A, a Bret Hart. Uh, you know mm -hmm. that type of like mat on the you know, submission holds. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lots of counters. Very methodical type wrestling style. I mean, Dean Malenko, if you watch some of those Dean Malenko matches, my God, yeah. that dude was amazing. Um, or oh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Ricky Steamboat. Wrestlers. Ricky Steamboat kind yeah. of was, was on the bigger side. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. so I yeah, I would I would already got it planned out, my friend. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I would uh, love like uh, a Samoa Joe type character. I, I feel like I could match that. <laughs> like, you'd be a, uh, either like a Samoa Joe or like a John Mox. Which is are, you, are, you, are you Aaron six Rosenstein. foot something? <laughs> No, 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 no. I don't even know how much Samoa Joe weighs. My, he's a big, I know, I know. He's, that's a big I mean, boy. Big. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not from America. I'm not. I don't have the height. I'm I'm five ten, five nine something. Hey, I'm from America and I don't have the height. Hell, I'm. <laughs> you 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 got like you got like. Uh, oh, geez, you got like six inches on me, buddy. <laughs> I'm not tall. I'm not tall. People, no, but, I've been uh, discussing I'm this. I'm just with talking about the aura. I, you know how you I, you speak. I'd say, like how John Moxley and Samoa Joe speak, they're like they're gonna murder you or something. Right. Well, That's Taz, Taz is a great example. Yeah, yeah, Short Taz. dude. Yeah, Taz. If you watch some of his yeah. ECW promos, I mean, they built him yeah. up like a fucking monster. He was only yeah, like just, five. He was only like five eight or something like that, yeah, which is short yeah. for a wrestler. They built yeah. him up like a fucking monster in his promos yeah. with the towel over his head in the alleyway. Yeah, exactly. And he would end it with, beat me if you can, survive yeah. if I let you. you that dude yeah, yeah. looked like he could murder someone. <laughs> exactly. Like I want that aura. Like learn to speak, use weapons, bite people, scratch or something. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> moving beyond wrestling. <laughs> 
Uh, there was some uh, people talking about it, my it height now. Covered, so, people talking yeah. about my height now in the chat, and I have to just say this too <laughs> as I keep interrupting you. Whenever I meet someone who sees, who knows me from online, whether it be the live streams, the show, Majority Report, Twitter, whatever it may be, and they meet me for the first time, they're always like, "I don't know why I thought you were like either like average height or some people even told me that. for some reason I thought you were like tall, like six foot or something like that." And I'm like, "What made you think that?" And I was like, I don't know. You have like tall. I think it's like the something? camera thing. I think I it's like the, the cameras like play. So taller people are like shortened, and then unless you're like really wide or something, maybe yeah, wide people think you're tall for some reason. Maybe I don't know why, but I'm always like, I don't feel like I give tall people energy. I feel like I give off like Napoleon energy, like <laughs> small, short, <laughs> like. R- rabid rambunctious short person energy that's what i feel like i give off but if people think i'm tall hell i'll take it uh, yeah that's that's a plus uh yeah but uh since it doesn't really get talked about like uh, i keep mentioning some stuff uh, from my homeland there were protests going on because like china wants to control our port right because it's easier for them like the whole i guess economically if our port is like the ideal situation for them because it uh, you know, the reason they're so defensive about Taiwan is because there's a small choke point uh, and all of their shipping goes through that. It's like Thailand or something, I don't know. Like the, this this really narrow valley they go through, uh, uh, all their shipping containers. That's why they want to control the South China Sea. And on the like road side, it's Kazakhstan, all that stuff. It's snowing, it's hard, and road transportation is expensive anyways. So they want to go through Pakistan. There's a port called Gwadar, which is in Balochistan. And the, they're basically pushing the people out who for generations are, have been fishermen over there. And they were protesting, which doesn't really get covered. They like cut off uh, internet. They cut off the internet for a few weeks. They arrested like some of the big leaders. Who knows what happens to them because they can just kill them later. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, it's sort of like a slow burn genocide, but no one really like, like uh, talks about it. So I'd like to keep mentioning it uh, in a, wherever I can. Uh, but yeah, moving from like fun news to some depressing news. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, there's nothing fun happening in in Pakistan right now, like with Iran Khan and other stuff. I guess it's mellowed out, but and now it's de- depressing news again. Man. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess but, there's just no no good news anywhere right now. No, that there is some good news. Oh, well, go ahead. Wow. Just... Do you don't know about Brazil? Like the <laughs> January sixth thing they did, where no one was in uh, anywhere, and they just arrested all of them. Like like Lula was like, no, you're not going home. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they did it the right way. I mean, why let these people leave? I mean, you're, you have them right there. Like, we did that. Yeah, we let exactly. them go home. Ridiculous. I, I, I guess, to be fair, Trump was still the president. But uh, beyond that, like, yeah, it's also a problem with the U.S. Like, the U.S. doesn't punish people because it's like uh, everything will turn out fine. That, that, there's this whole mental, mentality of everything will turn out fine, uh, like Trump's an aberration, whatever. Like, people don't perceive that the U.S. could just... Like, systems are built on, like, people following them, especially in the U.S. Like, the U.S. has, a, like, gentlemen's agreements. And if the gentlemen aren't there, then you're you're done. Uh, and that's what the Republicans are trying to do, replace all of those people for, for their own. Uh, but, yeah, it was fun because, uh, like, they came... They were carrying on the military, and then the same military men arrested them like military men military women whatever and put them in on the in the back and took them to jail and i saw a video of like bolsonaro supporters in florida praying in front of the house he's staying at i don't oh, know yeah, why I, this they, they that, look so yeah. pathetic they look these so guys, pathetic whenever they're praying these guys are pathetic it's so pathetic so <laughs> pathetic it's the same scenario that happened you know uh uh here where yeah. Uh, these guys don't care about you. Why are yeah. you? Why are you throwing away your life or or years of your life at the very least off on these guys? Yeah, they don't care about you. 
It's so yeah. sad. Like if if it w- if it's so like when you really think about it, like I don't feel bad for them. I don't wish that they like. I don't wish. I, oh, they shouldn't go to jail. No, they should pay face the consequences. Yeah, they should go to jail. Like, but it's they've still, reached that point. But it's still like just sad when you think about it. Imagine like, like, all of them are sad. Like imagine if they have kids, what these poor kids have to deal with, and it's not their kids' fault. Yeah. Like these people uh, are just this like just. What a, what a what a what a world we're living in right now. I saw where this these, video where, where of like peons, uh, yeah. peons willing to throw their with everything. We're not in medieval times. Yeah. These peons with the world at their fingertips can do anything to lift themselves um, out of this peon mode. I'm not saying lift themselves out of poverty or whatever. I, listen, yeah. that's a whole different thing. But I'm saying lifting themselves out of the peon mindset. Where they yeah, need yeah, yeah. these big authoritarian figures to tell them how to live their life, anyone can get themselves out of that. Yeah, that doesn't I mean, require were, uh, money uh, uh, or opportunity. Yeah. Just know that you don't need these fucking rich pieces of shit to tell yeah. you how to live your life. We don't need saw, royalty, authoritarians, see, yeah. and they could get themselves out of this peon mindset with the world at their fingertips, information, communication. And they just don't do it. They fucking simp for these people yeah. and throw their lives away. I saw the like a video of a family, and the poor kids like they were just five a five year old and an eight year old or something. Uh, I think the eight year old were like spewing this nonsense about uh, like the entire cult and the elitists and all this nonsense. Like, it was like so sad because, I mean, it's not the kids' fault. They're just saying whatever their parents told them, but. It looks so, like it, it's pathetic, and I wish the kid grew up, grows up and learns. But who knows? Like you're stuck in that uh, sort of situation. Everyone around you is crazy, and you end up like that too. And beyond those, like those pathetic ones, the Andrew Tate fans and all those, like uh, uh, you know, the men red pill type people. They're so sad as well. They're like uh, miserable, angry at women, and angry at everyone else. And I saw these videos of like this idiot making a like a, an SMV score, uh, sex, the sexual marketplace value score or something stupid like that. And talking about like, he just brought up random people and he's like, this person's a three, this person's a two. And it's it just sad. Like this in the insulting people, they're insulting themselves. They're depressed. They go further into and that's the purpose of these uh, red pill people is to make them more depressed. So like, who would want to befriend anyone like that? And they don't get any friends. They don't get any uh, partners. So of course, they'll go deeper in the hole because of it. They'll be like, I'm just born this way type of thing. And they promote eugenics and everything. It, it, it's sad. But uh, at least uh, we can have some fun with them. <laughs> Like the the Bolsonaro fans getting uh, getting arrested, yeah, and I they're mean, like they're cultists. I mean, at least some catharsis in Brazil. The victory is never certain. Like they could come back with a vengeance, but at least for now in Brazil and in Latin America, these people are like just getting demolished. At least for now. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, I I don't I don't I don't I don't um. Hmm. I uh I I don't feel bad for them. Uh, well, at yeah. the same time, feeling bad for the situation. Um, yeah. And I think it's uh very bizarre, very bizarre that they repeated after seeing it here too. Like they saw <laughs> no, that. No, no, even no, like no. like imagine seeing it fail that. here. Imagine seeing it fail here and going. No, no, it's funnier than that though. They saw it fail here while they were voting for the guy. Like they were like, okay, we're gonna certify Biden, right? In Brazil, it was the holidays. The pre- the president was out of the country. He's in office now, Lula, and he's out of the country doing some like what a president does. The parliament or whatever they have is closed. The Senate is closed. They're just going there on a Sunday, like, sure, why not? And breaking the building basically, just vandalizing it for no reason. No one's there. Everyone's like. Why are they here? <laughs> I mean, it, it's 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 hilarious that they went. At when least the wasn't... the job of the military easy. I know police. The police there is also very extremist, but the military arrested a lot of them. 
I, I, I would love to know um, what what they thought was going to happen. Like you said, everything was already done. Like I think uh, was, yeah, it just a, ex- was it just was just to to let out their rage. I'm very confused. No, I think someone explained it to me. So their thinking was that they're going to take over, like, and then they're going to stand in front of these military facilities. And their thought was that our military supports us. It's just we haven't provided them the right, like, we need to let them know that we're the people are with them type of thing, you know? And we just need to convince the military to arrest Lula and arrest these, uh, arrest the other politicians and to bring Bolsonaro back. So that's what they were trying to do. Like, there are videos of people, like, chanting for the military outside these, uh, like, uh, wherever the military are, barracks or whatever, I don't know. And then when these people came, the military came, they were cheering the soldiers. But then, of course, the soldiers arrested them. <laughs> um, it's, it's so funny. It's, it's, making you, it's making you cough. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to take you out. They're going to they're gonna take you out because it's so ridiculous. Yeah, it's... I mean, the world is stupid. Like, uh, I, when I was like uh, growing up, learning about politics, and right, like I, I didn't have the best ideas, but I was slowly learning, growing, understanding everything. Okay, the world has nuance. Like uh, because of everything the U.S. did, I used to like completely just hate it outright. Like okay, even that has nuance, and sometimes the U.S. can do good, even the most of the time it does bad internationally, and domestically the U.S. has some good points, whatever. But now it's going back into the simplistic thing of like, there's just some dumb people in the world and some really evil people who just do evil stuff. And for who, who knows why? Like the transphobia the previous scholar was talking about or like whatever the, these people are doing. Or like they arrested Greta Thunberg in, in, Gen, in Germany because she was protesting in like a town that they're completely demolishing to make way for like a coal mine. Like they're just completely kicking out all the people in this town, demolishing it. And building a coal mine and now it's like it's just stupid like <laughs> every t- politics is just stupid and it's just like stupid people doing stupid things just to make money yeah i mean i, I saw greta get uh arrested today uh you know yeah. the, Ma- the matrix sent their agents <laughs> 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 I mean, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, listen, I think she's cool. I think she's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that picture of her getting yeah, arrested. Like, I can't imagine and they're, myself. They're, they're holding her up, and she's got this little smile on her face. Good for her. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's just like, like, that's just badass. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think she's top G. She's no. my top G. She's top no, G she's, to me. She's amazing. <laughs> As a kid, like, uh, like uh, she started out by just protesting alone. Every Friday or something, and now she's like, uh, it's insane. Just, I mean, if, she's no one, right? Like, and also Malala Yousafzai, even though there's a lot of conspiracies about her in Pakistan, like she took a bullet right here, and yeah, there's like these conspiracies her, yeah. about like how her father is opportun- an opportunist or she's being manipulated or whatever. But like, it's insane, right? uh, even if like it's scary to protest and and to speak up against like people who who will kill you yeah and like I mean, uh, and like people who control the world and i like the richest in history like the coal miners and the gas owners and the fossil fuel industry and everything it's insane yeah yeah uh, yeah. uh but yeah, speaking of like some dumb stories this this one isn't as consequential but still did you hear about andrew callahan i did and what he was doing I did. I talked about this. Uh, I don't remember. I, I'm on so many fucking shows now. I don't know. Yeah, I, the leftist. Re- and I really like the leftist mafia. It's fun. Yeah, I think it's really it's fun too. I gotta yeah. say, I didn't. I didn't put have much input in the name, and every week yeah. I think I like the name. I dislike the name more and more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish it wasn't called that. I mean, we they did ask, and we, everyone gave. Uh, yeah. I didn't give any uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's suggestions. Your fault, then. You should, you should it's have my given fault, a bit right? Of I, I really don't like the name, but the actual show is great. I think I have a lot of fun on yeah, it. Yeah. The only problem I mean, is I have a, a tendency of, of you know, I if there's something I know about, I I take over. I I, I let my expertise. No, fly. I, I feel like I feel like it's that's the problem with every 
streamer because all of you have that problem. <laughs> right, right. So like, but when I do it on that show, people complain sometimes, yeah. and then I know David Dole. And then uh, I know that David Dole talk. Yeah, uh, that's a request. And, <laughs> and, and but then I let I let other people talk, but then I realize like I'm like I I I'm sitting there for like an hour and a half, and I'm like, wait a minute, have I said yeah. anything the past hour? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've seen where you've you've tried to not talk, but with David, he actually doesn't talk. So I guess he doesn't have the ego. Yeah, Lance, Lance, of, Lance of the Lance is kind of quiet on that show too sometimes too. I feel like he talks enough, but I guess it, uh, I'm bad with names. Mike talks the most, and the other host, uh, not Illuminati. I'm oh, really bad Ola with Ola names. Yami, Ola Yama. Ola Yumi? Ola Yumi, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, she's Open great. Everyone's right. great. I think yeah, we gotta, he's we, great. Yeah, yeah. We got to work out. Yeah, the, but you're a streamer, so everyone gotta loves work to out. It's six people. We got to work out a better yeah. way to get the, uh, you know, the uh, yeah. the equal time sort of down path. Everyone so loves natural. to talk except David. <laughs> everyone loves to talk except David. I'll let him know that. I'll let him know. The, the, yeah. the, the fans, yeah, but the, the people demand. <laughs> That David Dole talks about. But Andrew's more. situation is, is, is insane because each time a new story comes out, it gets worse and worse. Like, it, it was okay, he's being a sex pest. He's a sexual harasser. And this latest one was like almost like he's a rapist. Oh, wait, I didn't hear this one. The ones I heard were yeah. um, him, him, and this is still very bad, obviously, but yeah. him basically wearing women down until like he forces yeah, yeah. consent out of them. Oh, no, no, it's even worse. Like, in one of them, he was, like, really drunk, and this woman was trying to take him home and because his home was near or something, and he was, like, touching her, and he, she's like, uh, please stop, I don't want to have sex with you, and in the end, she asks him to leave, but he's not leaving. And then another one came in which he, uh, she said he spilled wine on her and then took her shirt off and licked the wine off her, off her chest or My something, God. beer chest. What? It just gets worse oh, and worse. Come on. What is wrong with people? I don't get it. I don't get how I don't get how you get yourself in these situations. Yeah, like, like, I don't I, I'm not talking, I, I, mean, like, I want to be clear here. The uh, yeah. Andrew Callahan. I don't know how yeah, yeah, yeah. he puts himself in like how he becomes this type of person. Like but I don't I mean, get I how you, like, uh, like I maybe I'm too being, maybe maybe I'm too too maybe yeah. I am sort of an innocent little like <laughs> <laughs> like I don't get how you do that to somebody. I mean, it's common sense. I I don't get like I, I get like somehow convincing yourself of like okay, consent is complicated, whatever, whatever. But at some point, you're gonna realize like it's obvious. What the hell are you doing? No one like that person doesn't want this. Stop. You can't just keep doing it and doing it. And he had this weird pseudo apology, which wasn't a real apology, and he blamed drinking on it and i'm i'm gonna sober up now or whatever it's weird like i don't think anyone being drunk would change their entire personality right they're still the same person so i don't know i mean i feel i feel like though uh you know it's i feel like we see this happen so much where uh people who get these uh, great opportunities just decide to just uh, end up end up being just not good people a lot of the times, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to yeah. assume, actually, it has to do with that personality type. Like, you're a certain personality... Like, if you're a personality type who, who, who can do those things to another person, you're also the personality type who probably... Um, is doing uh, uh, some like uh, underhanded stuff behind the scenes to get where you are in your career too. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like you're the I mean, yeah, you play nothing hardball. Co nothing's come out, but maybe. Like, I'm, not, yeah, yeah, because, I'm not saying I'm not, uh, I'm not talking about him specifically. Yeah, yeah. I'm just talking about the yeah, mindset yeah, no, no. of like why also why like, so many of these successful people end up being that person. I guess. And I think and I think that personality the type has a lot to do with being both. Also, like that aspect of shamelessness, like, like you get more opportunities if you don't like don't have a filter or like, a, like you don't hesitate. But then not hesitating has other like, in other stuff, it of course it's, it's bad, and in some cases it might be good. Like with interviewing and getting to know people and contacting people, it might be good. But in this case, in the other case, you need some hesitation or and some shame. 
except everyone needs a healthy dose of shame. Yeah. And hesitation. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think I should go now. It's been a while. No, I just yeah, almost been great, 40 minutes. I, I have a great con- well, we're having great con- yeah. everyone's coming on the show yeah, yeah. and, and no, bringing I'm, me uh, a, yeah. a whole bunch of things. But uh, Osama, always a pleasure to talk with you. Yeah. Uh, continue to uh, have it's fun. for the other people, like uh, you might enjoy it, but other people will be like, Why doesn't this guy shut up? Why is he still here? Hey, listen, it's my show. If uh, if I'm enjoying <laughs> talking to someone. I think we're getting good content out of this at the very least. I mean, yeah, I, that, yeah, yeah. I don't just view you as content. Uh, but, but I'm a fan, right? So I need to be considerate of other fans. All right. All right. I get it. I get it. This, we're just going. Okay. To, and now okay. this is getting lame. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'm right. boring you out just so we can go. Have a, have a great night, Osama. Okay. Have a good one. Bye. Uh, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hello, hi. Hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Aslan from New Zealand. It's your best New Zealand buddy. Aslan, you're the guy who I was on the phone with that time when we got disconnected and my internet went out completely, right? That's me. That's me, baby. Oh, first of all, can I pull you up on the feed? Say, say again, sorry? Can I pull you up on the feed? Aslan. No, can I pull your video up on the feed? Oh, how do I, yeah, 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 do that, do that, do that, do that. Awesome, awesome. Sorry, the internet. This is the weird. first time we've spoken since that, that day, right? This is correct. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> where you been? So, so nice. We were, we were having a really great conversation that night about, what was it? Oh, about like music, right? What the I fuck? We were talking about music, yo. Yeah. Yeah. Why the, oh man, that sucks. That was a great, that was a great talk. Yeah, I was having a, I was having a good chat. Um, <laughs> it was a real, I thought maybe my internet had fucked out or something, but. No, my internet know, just it, completely shit the bed, just dead, gone. No internet that, that night. Sucks. Yeah. It happened again, or you got everything sorted out? No, it was just like a one, a one night, not even a whole night, just a few hour. I don't even think it was a whole of hours. Even I think it was like just an hour long, like uh, outage that just happened at the worst possible time. That's gonna be super frustrating. Yeah, yeah, but uh, my, uh, my we're here now. On real quick. I, I got. Oh yeah, put your headphones on. Go ahead, go ahead. If they will let me, yeah, there we go. I gotta say, my dad. All right, do you hear me? My my dad right. has spoken about our con- has brought you up b- due to our conversation numerous times, because I think if you remember, I told told you how my dad grew up in New Zealand. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I you talked were- to him briefly um, on Twitter uh, before I got banned, uh, ah. which is something I actually wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, but he actually. Uh, I don't remember if you told me on the feed or maybe you told him afterwards. You told uh, 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 my dad where, like, where in New Zealand you lived. And my dad knew exactly where it was, was able to pull it up on the map and show me how close he lived. And he, like, was completely reminiscing about his his years living in New Zealand. So just thought you would, uh, I thought I would share that with you about what you, what, what you did to my dad. You made, made him uh, reminisce to the point where he was pulling up Google maps and <laughs> typical dad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I like that. Yeah. I, like I said, I had, a, I had a good chat to him, um, on, on Twitter about something or other. And, and to do with that as well. Uh, I thought it was, it was good. It seems like a nice guy. You got a nice dad. Oh, thank you. He's a good guy. Yeah, he is a good guy. That's good. <laughs> he's listening to this, um, so he's a good guy. No, totally he... <laughs> so, so why why did you get banned from Twitter? What happened? Uh, it was actually before <laughs> you got banned, um, and I really was like hoping because I saw that you got banned and then you got reinstated and stuff, and I was like, I was trying to get uh, either get to talking to you on Sam uh, on the on the Majority Report or somewhere um, so that I could link myself into the conversation. But um, it, it didn't end up happening. But the reason um, I was – I'd retweeted someone under a Kyle Rittenhouse post. Um, and they had said – and the weird thing about it, it, there was like zero engagement with any of these tweets. Like I retweeted this tweet, and his tweet had zero engagement. So did mine. But his tweet said, Kyle Rittenhouse is an American hero. And I retweeted him and said, 
Kyle Dick writers are a strange bunch. That's all I said. Um, and then uh, I lost my account for harassment and abuse. What? I feel like I've seen people yeah. say that type of stuff all the time. Right. <laughs> that doesn't I mean, seem out I, of the ordinary. You didn't. You didn't. You, you didn't use the word kill or murder or the usual uh, words that get people suspended because they think you're like threatening someone. Uh, no. Yeah, that's very. Dick Rider, like Kyle Rittenhouse, Dick Riders are a strange bunch. That's yeah, that's that that's was... that's not the usual yeah. uh, stuff that gets you banned on Twitter. That's very bizarre. Super weird, yeah. And I've been appealing and appealing and appealing, and nothing's nothing come back, which is a real bummer because I feel like I get a lot of my news from Twitter, um, and so I feel super out of the loop with a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, are you? Are you? How, how is your account suspended? uh well like i can still i can still view stuff you know like you can you can scroll through things but my account is completely uh you can't see it you're and the, I you, can't. you have the read only mode screen right i suppose so yeah yeah yeah, yeah i remember that it, it's better than the other one though when they, they uh when they lock your account which lets other people oh. see your account but you don't get to see your feed like you don't get to see the people uh, you follow that's even worse yeah yeah, it's just real. It's it's um uh, what was I going to say? It's so what, um, what's been the process so far? You you um, what did you do? You you um, you... well, there's just a button that says you can appeal uh the thingy, you and know, you, you, and appeal you appealed. The... Yeah, and I've appealed, and it keeps coming back saying that the decision has been upheld, and I've done it like three or four times now. <laughs> really? So it's like it's it's pretty much I feel like gone gone, and and the thing is like it, you can't once that's happened i mean you can't really do twitter anymore like this is my second account technically because i got banned a different time uh, back in the day and then i made this one with a different email address a couple of years so technically i was ban evading or whatever but you know this was years and years and years ago and then i'd come into it now again with this one and why um, can't you well that's the thing is 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 it seems like it you know uh, it, it seems weird in the light of what elon has been proposing of 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 Twitter being this marketplace where anyone can come speak or whatever. Do you have, and do, if, you have do you have a screenshot of the tweet? Uh yeah, I do. I do. Send it to me. I'm gonna I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna post about it tomorrow during the daytime when uh, there's someone on Twitter who can possibly deal with this stuff. That'd be dope. I'd like that. Um, you know, I uh, I don't really have any other avenue for <laughs> for getting back into things, and it's not like my account's big. Like I've got like. Do you, got, like, do you know? Do you know that that's didn't you wait hold on? Didn't you get? Uh, temporarily suspended for tweeting something that included a screenshot that had to do with me or something. I remember that. Yeah, that, that was to do with the, that was to do with the, um, when the screen, um, uh, uh, when you, when your internet cut out, I took a, I took a screenshot of your face and my face and it like frozen or whatever. And I tweeted it at you saying something like, that feeling you get when the trip when the stream drops or something i don't know it was something stupid and yeah i got i think i got like a like a seven day ban or something that's bizarre uh <laughs> but if if, if are you sure there was nothing else you tweeted that like, that doesn't even seem like something that would trigger anything kyle the, the, dick writers are so weird or something to that effect right that's that's i mean that's literally the thing like that that uh like i said they, they you know they send you an email and they they attach the tweet um that is the send offending it one send it to me that's uh, bizarre yeah that's what i figured <laughs> so you know very odd where's where's the best place to send it to you on on oh i can't send it to you on twitter um uh, email to me matt at x matt x dot com i don't know, let me just write it down real quick because I'll. I, I really need to i really need to uh work on getting a because that's just like my personal email that i use for everything that's not like my work email like my work as in my day job email um, right i really need to get an email that i i mean i have the domains that i could use i just need to set it up for like yeah. my show stuff uh that would be a smart thing for me to do eventually uh <laughs> maybe the impetus for you to do that <laughs> Can you just repeat your email address? Sure. It's Matt, my first name, M-A-T-T. -T. Yep. At, like the at, you know, the at symbol. Yep. And then the letter X as an X-ray. Yeah. My name, Matt, M-A-T-T. -T. 
Matt and then X. the letter X as an X ray again. Dot yeah. com. So it's Matt at X Matt X dot com. You know, if it's, as if it's like a a, a straight edge hardcore band. Who, yeah, you know, I got they you. Put the, they put the X's in the front and the back of their. Uh, and it's got a name. it's got a review looking like a skater dude. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's <laughs> me in. Um, oh my god, that's a very old picture. I should replace that. <laughs> That picture is now, God, that picture is now, geez, I don't remember. It's definitely more than, it's around maybe 15 or 16 years old. Yeah, I need to, need to change that picture. That's the last time I didn't have a beard. It's the last time I didn't have a beard. Oh, I've been thinking about shaving my beard off because it's so obnoxious, but like, I feel, I like the aesthetic, you know, I like the look of it. But oh, like I, 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 I don't think I'll ever shave again because I just don't think my <laughs> face is – I don't think the world is, just, could handle. <laughs> mentioning beards, um, uh, so I'm writing a master's thesis at the moment, and I, I shared this on, on – I've been way more active on Reddit lately. Um, and so I shared it on the Classical Memes Reddit. So my, my thesis is about improvisation and classical music. And, um, and I was reading about this one guy who had to do with classical music and improv and stuff. Um, and so I was typing about him and I was like, um, this guy, uh, who was a monk uh, at such and such. And then I looked up a picture of this guy and man, he had this beard. This is a guy from like in the 1600s or some shit. And it was just, it was a pit, like a drawn picture of him. And he had this massive long beard. And so with, with a, what I, the thing that I shared to my, to the, the classical Reddit was, was the question, is this appropriate for a master's thesis? And what I'd written was, you know, um, such and such guy from such and such place. And then I put a footnote and said, and he has an amazing beard. Um, and so I put it out to the, put it out to the Reddit sphere. I thought he had a pretty amazing beard. Uh, beards are, you know, I, I, I <laughs> always love a good impressive beard. In fact, in pro wrestling, keeping the whole, the whole thing going, uh, the theme of the show, this, this episode, if a wrestler comes out, uh, debuts with a huge beard, you know they're gonna be. They're gonna be. You, they, you gotta watch out. That guy's gonna be tough as b- nails. Yeah, true story. True story. Was the guy like I? I only just cottoned on to the last little bit of what you were talking about with the last guy. But you were talking about Andrew Callahan. Is that correct? Yes. I thought you might have been talking about Justin Roiland because that was the thing that came out as well. That is um, something that I heard about as well. The the Rick and Morty guy. And, and in full disclosure, I am a huge. Huge fan of Rick. No, I'm just joking. I've actually never watched a single episode. <laughs> no, Man. I've never seen a single Rick and Morty episode. In fact, we were playing Fortnite a couple of weeks ago. My son and I, my, my seven year old and I, and in yeah. the the Fortnite store for a couple of weeks, uh, late last year, earlier this year, um, they had Rick and Morty characters in the store, and he thought they were so cool because they were like 2D animation. They were still like yeah. 2D animated characters, but they were in like the 3D Fortnite world. They looked cool. Yeah. But I yeah. was like, and he wanted to like buy one in the Fortnite store, buy one of the skins, the Rick and Morty skins. And I was like, so like, I was like, Ezra, we don't know who these fucking guys are. I didn't say fuck him. I was like, we don't know who these guys are. We don't watch Rick and Morty. We don't, we have no idea who they are. If we even would like them, I'm not buying these skins. I bought them like a star <laughs> Wars skin instead. Uh, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I've yeah. never seen a Rick and Morty episode. I've heard who's the scientist. Is that Morty? Rick. That That's Rick. Okay. I've heard him talk, uh, yeah. easily one of the most annoying voices I've ever heard in a cartoon in my life. Oh, well, you haven't heard Justin <laughs> Rowland's other character, friggin' Lemon Grab from, uh, from, um, uh, Adventure Time. He's pretty fucking annoying. But I, I, think I like, the- oh, he did Adventure Time too. Oh, that's, that sucks. Cause I did he, like he Adventure was, Time. He was, um, he was Lemon Grab. So he wasn't like a main, main character. Was it his was, show uh, or was he just, he was just a character on it? He, he was, he was just a voice on, on the show. Oh, okay, good. All right. That makes me feel better. Cause Rick and Morty's his show, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's him and, and, and Dan Harmon. All right, cool. I don't. I don't mind so much now. Now that I know he's just a can't do much. If you know, uh, actors will be that way. They don't usually have much to do with the show in terms of. Uh... Yeah, I mean, you're not super missing out. It's. It's. Uh, I really enjoyed it for the first couple of seasons. Like the first three seasons, I thought were pretty good. Um, 
I, I maybe if I went back and watched them now again, I'd be like, eh. But I, at the time, at the, they 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 were they were good for a certain time and place. Um, but then I don't know. There, there's an episode with the uh, the more recent seasons. Like I haven't, I've seen that there's been new ones on Netflix, and I haven't been like, oh my god, I need to watch them. It just doesn't have that that pull for me anymore. Um, so you know. I don't know, I just, ne I just never, just never really, I, I never, it never really inter interested me, honestly. Yeah, that's fair. Do you watch, car like, you, I mean, you said you liked Adventure Time. Do you watch, uh, you know, adult cartoons and things like that? I don't. I was never a big fan of the Cartoon Network, like, Adult Swim stuff. Um, mm. I am a big fan of, um, uh, this is funny, because when I worked at the Majority Report, you know, I, I was aware of Bob's Burgers, never really watched it too much, but I was aware of it. I thought it was a good show. And I was working mm. with uh, literally Hugo was my boss. I was essentially, I guess you could say, uh, his real life, Sam's real life Ron. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, I have gotten super into Bob's Burgers ever since I saw the Bob's Burgers movie that came out over the summer. And I'm True. addicted to watching Bob's Burgers. And I think that show is fucking fantastic. I think it's it is great. so good. I can't believe yeah. I slept on it for so long when I friggin' worked with someone who was a voice on it. Um, so I think it's amazing how good it is. I think it's it's easily so much better than I think it's in a league of its own. Honestly, I think it. it, it I think it. I, I think it even eclipses The Simpsons. Oh yeah, it never seems to dip in quality. Like I feel like it's gotten better over the years. A lot, you know, a lot of the time. And they they always seem to come up with with great new, uh, you know. It, it seems to have a lot of longevity um, in that sense too. Um, and and I, you know what? Yeah. You know, you know, you know I might like it a little bit more than than others too. Is that the the family dynamic on Bob's Burgers? I think really lends the dynamic of like a modern day family, like a couple with with kids. And mm -hmm. I could speak from experience. I mean, like that's sort of how I feel and a lot of it like obviously the situations they get themselves into are over the top a lot of times but i mean the yeah, actual yeah, yeah. like dynamic between um bob linda between the two of them and then their relationship with their kids i mean it's fantastic i really love it that's great it's actually it's, it's kind of interesting i was talking to my mom about this uh, a couple of days ago because uh my father's on the autism spectrum um, and uh, I've had a, quite a different family dynamic growing up with that in mind. Um, and the, the 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 dynamic I see in that um, in that show is is wildly different to what I'm used to. Um, uh, um, and I I just think that's interesting. You know, um, it's not necessarily good or bad thing, but um, but yeah, that's uh. That's my experience with with that kind of thing. But I agree in the in the sense of, um, uh, it, it, I think I mean I I think it's hard to beat The Simpsons season two through eight ish, but then definitely now. I, I, I liked I liked Early Family Guy because I thought there was actually like they were doing something different and funny. I thought, and then they just mm -hmm. fucking beat that whole joke set up over the they beat it to death like a yeah. like like it like. Maybe like that first season was great, and then all of a sudden it's just done. Like I hate Family Guy now. Uh, I uh, um, never got into American Dad. Never got into Futurama, which is not for me. Just not really my thing. Um, and I know that the robot's name is Bender. Yes, I know. Um, <laughs> I um, I. What about I, I, Avatar? I, uh, never really got into it. Never got into it. Um, Someone right. asked about uh, what was this? Uh, so people are talking about South Park. Um, South Park for me was always complete hit or complete miss. Like mm. it really depends on the episode. There are episodes of South Park that are so unbelievably good, and then there are episodes of South Park that are so unbelievably just not funny. Like completely miss mm. the mark. Um, really depends, I guess, on the seasons and the episodes itself. Um, yeah, I found their serialized stuff to be not great. You know, when they started like having overarching stories uh, through the seasons, um, and I I always find the the creators like 
rabid centrism to be really grating like it comes through so much in a lot of a lot of their storylines and stuff especially when they start talking about politics and things in in the show um i find it very kind of just like eye rolly um but you're right there's like there's some episodes that are just like there's that one where is that one where um where they get the ninja toys and butters is dressed as a dog they dress him up as a dog because he gets a ninja star in his eye and they can't take him to a real hospital so they have to dress him up as his dog and the whole time butters is just like <laughs> and it's it's fucking hilarious it's such a good it's, it's such a good episode um but i can definitely think of some that as well that are just like oh god you know i roll uh hold on someone uh, someone said a uh, jangle fett said uh the jangle fett said early south park <laughs> is great i actually disagree early south park was just the shit and piss jokes they yeah, he, really yeah. hit their stride like i want to say that world of warcraft season really took them to a new level where they where they were still doing that humor but there was more to it than just the potty humor but then i feel like they went the opposite direction and tried to be too messagey and they failed then a few seasons down the road when they tried to do that because their politics yeah. aren't always great um yeah so they really are are hit or, hit or miss um, yeah. I, I will say the Obama episode is a rare win when they get to talk about shit, the politics one, the one where, uh, Stan's dad, Randy's going around singing the Obama's like, Oh, Obama, like just singing random Obama songs. It's, that's a great episode. That's a great episode. I'm trying the, someone mentioned Towley and yeah, I think Tow like Towley was great. The... <laughs> Oh, people um, are bringing up like just random cartoon. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan no, 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 in the late '80s, um, early Towley '90s. I had all the Park. figures. You know the oh. character in South Park, Towley. Oh yeah, Towley. Yeah, I was never. Uh, that was. I mean, I guess his voice and sayings were funny, but uh, again, a yeah. character we could have uh, seen maybe once and never seen again. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think the initial episode I thought was, I, I think it was that one because it's one of those ones where the kids are very much just not interested in going on a journey, but the the, the story just keeps dictating that they're going, that they're they're part of this like bigger thing, which I I found quite funny. I, I quite like that. Um, I, I will say, I will say, yes. nothing beats, um, nothing beats the. This is to me the greatest cartoons. The uh, Warner Brothers Looney Tune Merry Melodies from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Uh, the original. I mean, you don't get better than that. I mean, they're actually really fucking funny. They stand mm -hmm. the test of time. They're for mm -hmm. kids and adults alike. The jokes are not, um, you know, are not uh, a vulgar so that the kids can't watch it. But the humor, the jokes being made, you don't get a lot of the times unless you're uh, older in terms of like the, the insidery sort of things that are being said. It's really like top. And you know what's you know what's a lot like that? And people are sleeping on this show. I didn't know about it till Disney Plus. Uh, I got Disney Plus, but uh, which is a must have if you have small children. But there is a Mickey Mouse cartoon, an animated Mickey Mouse cartoon. They called it Mickey, just Mickey Mouse for a little bit. And then they came out with a, the, the most recent season, like was a year or two ago, called The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse. And then last year they did, uh, uh, instead of doing a new season, they did four episodes that covered each season of the year. There's a summer episode, a winter episode, a fall episode, a spring episode. It is fucking hilarious. I could not oh, yeah. believe where they took... Like, you think Mickey Mouse, you think, you know, uh, uh, they're not going to, you know, do anything to sully the the cutesy, perfect little picture of kid-friendly Mickey Mouse. This show really pushes it. It, it. I could not, it's it's like the old Merry Melody cartoons, but with Mickey Mouse and the gang. It is fantastic. My kids love it, and I love that they love it because they, when you're kids this age, they get like a show they watch it yeah. over and over and over again. I could watch these episodes over and over again. They're so good. If you haven't it, checked it, it out, definitely check it like, out. 
it, it, is it like five seasons or so? It's just called Mickey Mouse, right? Yes, yes. And it's animated, 2D animation. It's not the yeah. 3D like animated stuff. That's for like the little kids, the 3D stuff, like the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and stuff like that. But the, the, the animation like yes, stinks, right? All really? Like and this. so there's a bunch of seasons just called Mickey Mouse. And there's mm-hmm. one season called The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse, I think. And then there are four episodes that are not in one like uh, show thing. Like they're, they're special shows that are uploaded by themselves. So you have to right. look them up um, individually. Uh, but they are really, really fucking good. Uh, really funny okay. shit. Oh shit! Okay, cool. I'll put it. I'll put it. People, on the list. people, people, short, people but... are mocking me in the comment section, but I'm telling you, if you liked the old Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, Elmer Fudd, you know those cartoons, you will love these Mickey Mouse cartoons. They're they're like that, but with the Mickey Mouse gang. And I, it, it, you would never picture Disney allowing Mickey Mouse to do some of that shit. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's cool. Did you ever play um, Kingdom Hearts? You a gamer? You play games? Um, play a lot of Fortnite with my son. <laughs> That's all I play now. I love it though. Fortnite's a lot of fun. I really like it. Um, yeah, I get I why the kids like it. Yeah, I, well, I got I I tried it a little bit because I had some young cousins who 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 hit me on it. They were like, "Yo, have you played this game called Fortnite?" And I was like, "I don't know what the hell you talking about." And they installed it on my computer and made me play it. Um, and then, yeah, no, I, I quite enjoyed it, but th- those like the games that have like continuing seasons and new things coming out all the time, it all gets away on me real quick. And cause uh, you have to, it's like Twitter. You have to focus so much on it every day. I feel like maybe you don't, you don't think that, but, but I'm always just like, I come into it a week later and I'm like, holy shit, there's all this new stuff. What do I do with my life? You know, I, I, I will say I, I never could get into kingdom hearts. Um, because I'm not an RPG person. Um, uh, I liked, I liked Final like Fantasy. Not even like adventure I, RPG? I, uh, what? Not even like adventure action RPG? Cause that's, mm, you know. I'm trying to remember what RPGs I played. Um, uh, Final Fantasy VII obviously was big when I was in, uh, like junior high, I think. So mm-hmm. all my friends were playing it. So we would all play it together and try to do the stories together. Uh, you know, with Cloud, Strife and all that. Um, mm-hmm. and then, oh, Secret of Mana was big when I was in elementary school. So me and my friends would play Secret of Mana. You, you're noticing that the, the trend here that, uh, basically I played RPGs with my friends because we played them. That's the games we played together. Cause it was fun to do those stories together, like in real life yeah, together yeah, yeah, yeah. in a room together. But like outside of that, I never was an RPG. Per- I'm not a big, all right. I'm not a big storyline mode guy ever since. Fair. You could play on the internet. I just love fucking playing multiplayer so much more than storyline mode shit. I that's know that's fair. the that's opposite fair. of a lot of people, but that's just like I would I when when Gears of War came out, I was fucking obsessed. That was when I was in college. I was mm-hmm. obsessed with that game. I thought it was so much fucking fun because of the multiplayer mode. Right. I think that um like the only real like multiplayer games that I've played or continue to play, uh, like, like I played World of Warcraft too much. But a lot of the time with that, like I didn't really even play much of the, the multiplayer stuff. I I like League of Legends and I like playing that with friends. That's so that's kind of fun. I couldn't um, get into World of Warcraft either. My my, yeah. my wife was big into World of Warcraft. Friggin' well, it was leveling up her character. I don't remember how high you could get it, but she was obsessed with it got all the expansion packs i couldn't get into it and it was a bummer for me because i fucking loved the warcraft games before world of warcraft 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 2 warcraft 3 the frozen throne expansion i was fucking obsessed with those games i played them i even played the storyline modes for those games i fucking was obsessed with those games i could still fucking quote the characters my life for nazul and all that shit (laughs) i fucking Loved it. Yes, my lord. What do you want? Okay. <laughs> All that shit. Poking? Yeah, we kept poking them. <laughs> I, I fucking was obsessed. Um, I loved it. And I was always so fucking resentful of World of Warcraft. Because I felt like okay. if it wasn't for World of Warcraft, 
we would have got our Warcraft 4 eventually, and then our Warcraft yeah. 5 eventually. But World of Warcraft mm-hmm. had to come in and steal the fucking spotlight, and we, a Blizzard quickly gave up on the old style of Warcraft games and ruined my shit. Ah, oh, man. They did it specifically to piss you off. I, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I really do think. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever play StarCraft? Because like StarCraft couldn't get into StarCraft. StarCraft Couldn't get into StarCraft. Not the same. Same with Diablo. wasn't wasn't Warcraft to me. Couldn't get into it. That's interesting. I'm very picky, man. I'm super picky, super picky when it comes to games. I was huge on like all the Blizzard stuff. So like at StarCraft, I thought it was so dope. I thought like because those the 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 cannon things you could get on the human the Terrans where they had like that they had a thing on top and then they would like turn into like a turret and like fire shit I, that, I thought they were the coolest goddamn thing ever and then like yeah i played diablo heaps with my friends um well actually no i didn't play with my friends we because we only had dial up what am i talking about um but i knew that we talked about it a lot so like i had the original ones and I, I think i still even got like the cd of of the expansion of diablo in my collection there somewhere oh wow which is super yeah i know yeah. old school uh, ryan old, lennon old, fan says old, rts old. games real-time strategy games are just not popular anymore yeah it's too bad i will say this i wasn't a fan with the whole genre like i think with blizzard did with the warcraft games was like the perfect amount of rts style games where it wasn't too over the top like you get Mm. way too crazy when you get into like civilization and how much you could do with that like blizzard managed to get the like just just the perfect amount of buildings the perfect amount of like classes and fighter types like i feel like sometimes those games got over the top to the point where they just weren't fun it was like work to sort of figure out all the different shit you could build and 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 grow and stuff like that Warcraft was just the perfect amount of uh, the number of, of, of buildings, ca- army types, uh, uh, hero characters. They just really mm-hmm. hit it perfectly, I thought. I thought I think StarCraft gets a little bit too much. Uh, I think that's why I didn't like StarCraft, but I could be rem- misremembering my, my StarCraft critiques because it's been a long time. Yeah, I, I, I feel like... Um... Like StarCraft One was very much analogous to to start to, to Warcraft Two in the sense that it was it didn't have the hero characters and things like that. I liked the I liked the story from from StarCraft and how like you played through like as you got through the Terrans you got to the end of that and then the story then kicked off into the Zerg campaign which then kicked off into the Protoss campaign and that was all I I really liked all that as well that was all very interesting. Um, I'm never. I was never very good at RTS games. Like, just not. The, the, I, f- I find that having to manage all the things a bit overwhelming. But like, I did. I did like the. Um, you know, playing against computers okay. But as soon as I play, I, I did. I remember one time specifically. I went around to a friend's house and we all con- we all connected up our computers via LAN, like with a cable and stuff, and we were playing StarCraft. Of oh, some wait, hold, sort. On, hold on one second. Sorry to interrupt you. I just realized. Ravana what? just raided me about 10 minutes ago on Twitch. Thank you so much, Who's Ravana. That? I got to have Ravana back on Doomed uh, soon. Uh, thank you so much for the raid, Ravana. Continue, uh, Aslan. I'm sorry. No, that's right. I have no idea what any of the words you just said me. <laughs> oh, it's a Twitch thing. Twitch. Ravana is a Twitch streamer who's been on Doom before. You might have seen her on the live stream. And she's uh, oh, yeah. she, she raided me. Fair. Twitch. I've I've done the occasional Twitch stream playing my guitar, but um, never got. Do I, people I need to be? Do people want to? Uh, people, I can't believe I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on. My my headphones are dying. One second, let me switch right. them out. Let me switch them out. Am I gonna all the with all with all this video game talk? Am I gonna have to do some video game gaming streams? Should I? Should I? I think uh, you think have to. I'm telling you, my uh, my my um, library of playing is going to be very outdated. You're going to see me stream. I mean, Fortnite's all uh, still popular, so I could uh, become you a Fortnite stream streamer. I will yeah. say this: my seven year old is really, really fucking good at Fortnite, and mm-hmm. I've been thinking that he should stream because he is very fucking good at seven, and he can possibly. Uh, make me some money by being <laughs> a good seven-year-old streamer. 
Um, I mean, and then 18 months down the line, we're gonna there's gonna be a documentary on Netflix about the man who exploited a seven year old child to be a to be a Fortnite. I mean, listen, streamer. I see this. I've seen this kid drop down into a group of like like four, five, six people and take them all out. Hey, the dude, kid, kid is good. He's good, and he's and he's good with the shotgun too. Like me, I grab, the, I go for the assault rifle because I can just hold the button down and take people out. He literally yeah, yeah. grabs the shotgun, gets up close, and just boom, 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 four people out, just like that. That's what the shotgun's for, like right up close in their face. Boom, yeah, yeah, shotgun. yeah. But I can't do that because when you get close up, they're gonna get you too. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. So I would put. I'm trying to think what I would put. So you'd get you'd get Fortnite. Maybe maybe I could bust out. Uh, I gotta have the license somewhere. License key somewhere. Warcraft three. Oh, wait, didn't they do a uh, the remake, the remaster of it? I'll, I could download the remastered. I'll buy the remastered one. Um, yeah. I'll yeah, buy you'll the, have to we'll, stream stream some Warcraft three. That'd be dope. Yeah, I'll do some Warcraft three streams. And the good thing about the Warcraft three stream is I don't have to dust off the PC. I could just play right on my Mac. Uh, cause they have, they're the only video, they're probably the only game that still has, has a native Mac version. <laughs> um, I can, uh, I can, uh, gears. you should play some Dark Souls, Elden Ring. Oh, you and people are telling me I should download, uh, and I've never played it before, but apparently the, the second, the sequel just came out, Overwatch. Oh yeah. 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 I've never That's played That's from it. Blizzard, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's Blizzard. All right, I'll, uh, maybe I'll download it's a, that. Yeah, it's like a first-person, um, first-person team-based thingy, where you run around with your team and shoot the other team. Uh, Fall Guys, anyone? Anyone up some Fall Guys? <laughs> Among Us. Among Us, I I still don't know how to play that game, and I I did play it uh, famously on stream t two years ago with uh, uh, who played it with me? Lance from oh Chelsea Manning, um, oh. yeah. Uh, the great Just thing about casually. that is because I basically went on the stream and let my son actually play, like actually do play. And he was like five at the time. He actually played Among Us. And he, he went up to Chelsea Manning's character and he, I guess, what is it called in Chelsea? I guess it's just called You Kill Someone. And he killed Chelsea Manning. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That's a good claim to fame. Killed Chelsea Manning in... Among us. Among us, yeah. <laughs> hey, See, I think, I think, I think, I think Fall Guys fucked up by not being free from the beginning, because they. This is not free. It's free now, but it wasn't free at the beginning. Oh shit! Sure. And because of that, I think when they the they they missed it when they was hot, like Fall like Fortnite's been around for a long time now, and it's still really fucking popular, and it's because yeah, it's yeah, always yeah. been free, so it never like dipped after the initial like thrill of the people who actually threw down the money to play it but mm -hmm. fall guys was hot that summer that it came out and then it, yeah, fucking it was just sort of like waned away and now it's not as big as it used to be i think because like by the time they made it free it was too late the hype was already done yeah i kind of haven't really heard about fall guy like i i don't pay a lot of attention to, to online gaming i suppose but yeah the the it, it seems to have have kind of fallen <laughs> it's full guide off a whole lot. That was, that was my great pun. Thank you. <laughs> Josh said, Bindra's son is Obama. You heard it here first, folks. Because he killed Chelsea Manning in Among Us. <laughs> wow. NR, NR Gray says, Matt's video game history is not so good. It definitely isn't. I'm just shooting the shit off the... Uh, <laughs> what, 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 what was I wrong about? Uh, listen, I've been, I was super into video games uh, yeah. back in the regular Nintendo days, just to get an idea of how old I am. Um, man, I remember the best NES game that I remember playing, the fucking dodgeball game. I don't know how old you guys are. I don't know how old you are, Aslan, but uh, that fucking dodgeball game for NES. Many, 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 many nights spent playing that game. I, I wasn't allowed a console when I was a kid, so... The, the first kind of computer game, the first games I ever played were on PC. And so it was like Doom and Wolfenstein and 
yeah, like like really early early stuff. And then one of my friends got a PlayStation, and we used to play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, which was awesome fun. Um, but yeah, I was never I, I never had a, uh, an NES or a Super Nintendo or a PlayStation right. when I was a kid. Oh, Josh yeah. is recalling Super Dodgeball, and all the characters in Dodgeball, the Dodgeball game. We're also characters from like the same exact like sprites or whatever you however you say it, um, yeah. same exact uh, like sprites from like River City Ransom or one of those fighting games. Oh. Another great game, River City Ransom. Another fucking great game. Yeah, I I that's Nintendo Super Nintendo Nintendo sixty four. That's me from three years old to um, I guess uh, gets me into high school. Those are yeah. the systems, and then. Once I'm in high school, um, backyard wrestling with the friends, um, mm -hmm. getting into uh, learning to play bass and then joining a, starting a punk band and playing shows yeah. and having a life away from video games. Um, although in high, in high school and college was when I was getting uh, really into Warcraft 3 again. I, I came back into it. So, but, mm -hmm. but, but in the big picture, my, video, my, my hardcore video game playing days are done around the time like GameCube is halfway through its shelf life maybe. Right, right. Like I would play GameCube with my siblings cuz they were the perfect age. Like they're like if they look back to what their favorite system is, their prime video gaming days is probably like the GameCube uh Xbox 360 era. Mm -hmm. Um so like they probably and I played that stuff with them, so that's probably where we overlap a bit, but you know, I'm already done with games, but uh, regular hardcore gaming by the time like Wii is out, PlayStation 3 is out. Uh, don't even get me started on Wii U. I don't think I've played more than like probably a total of 20 minutes on that thing. Um, <laughs> I, I do not get Switch. I'm very confused by it. Uh, I like Xbox One. That's fun because it's very close to Xbox 360. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I don't well, get the new systems. Days, I don't get really these new. Cool. I don't get the new Xbox system. Why would I need to buy it? All the games I could still play on Xbox One, right? I don't. There's no need for it not yet, right? What's the point of the new Xbox system? And all the stuff is getting released on PC and 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 whatever anyway. So I mean, like I have a I have a good gaming computer. So I like all the games that I want to play. I just play them on the old computer rather than you know having. I've been thinking about getting a PlayStation Five, but again, it's just like all those games are on the PC anyway. So why would uh, I bother? I don't know. I've never. I've never. Look, I, I had a PlayStation Two. Uh, mm. We got PlayStation Three, um, but I think the only game we ever really played that for was Last of Us. Um, yeah. And that's it. We gave up on PlayStation. It never really was a system I was into. I didn't think the games were great. Um, you know, Nintendo's got their all-star characters, but that's pretty much all Nintendo's got, but that's all they need. That's enough. Mario, Donkey mm -hmm. Kong, Kirby, Zelda, you know, that's all they need. And that's enough to get mm -hmm. you buying their shit. Um, but I always thought the best games console-wise were always coming out for Xbox. Yeah, I think I bought a, I bought a PS4 because I wanted to play uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man, Bloodborne, and a couple of others, but it was mostly those ones. Like I really wanted to play Bloodborne. Bloodborne's not on anything else except for fucking PlayStation Four, which sucks because it's a fucking fantastic game. It's one of the best, um, and you can only play it on PlayStation, um, which is a real super bummer. Uh, but that's one of the main reasons I got the PS4. Um, and then back in the day, like when I was uh, when I was younger, it was like having a PS2. I want to say I'm pretty sure I had a cracked PS2. And so you could like I'd go down to the, the video store and get the DVD, get the higher out of games and then copy them onto a onto a disc and then I could just use them. Um, so I never I never bought games. It was always just copied from the video store, um, and that was probably why I had that because my computer wasn't very good. So I wanted you know you get the PlayStation Two and that was that was dope. You know, and so oh, that was where Directive just in the chat just brought up Game Gear. Oh my God, that was way ahead of its time. That was fucking awesome. I loved Game Gear. What's a Game Gear? Oh my God! It was Sega's answer to the Game Boy. It was kind of big. It was maybe the size of Switch, but bulkier, obviously. And it was what? like it was like like I, I don't remember. I'm gonna get uh, scorched for not remembering my video game history. But I feel like it was like handheld, colorized, 16-bit 
games. Like Ooh. I was playing Sonic on there, and this is back in like I want to say the 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 early to mid 90s mm. i remember definitely mid 90s because i remember taking it to my uh to w- w- i would take it for the drives when we'd go to visit my nana and mm-hmm. she passed away in 96 1996 so it definitely was before 96 sure, um, sure, sure. it was like during the Gen- sega genesis super nintendo era it was their yeah. version of game boy but it was color and it was like really good 2D color graphics. Done. So you got to remember that here in New Zealand, we for a long time didn't get a lot of the stuff that was in the States or in Japan or whatever. Like we got the ass end of everything. So like. Did you get Virtual Boy? Uh, I don't think so. I had a Virtual I Boy. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I had a Game Boy. Like I had a Game Boy when I was a kid. Um, but like we had very limited, um, you know, access to a lot of stuff, especially back in the nineties and and closer to the two thousands. And we we get stuff, you know, weeks or months or or whatever later, especially in those times, later than when they were released or whatever. So you know, we I, I I missed out on a lot of stuff that in that sense as well, which uh, you know, not ideal. But I definitely played Game Boy a lot. That was that was one. Yeah, that was uh, man. Those are the the good old days. The good good old day <laughs> good old days. People were talking about the Dreamcast. Dreamcast. Dream, I didn't have Dreamcast. It was ahead of its time, uh, but I didn't have it. Uh, I was never a Sega really a Sega person. Honestly, they didn't have the mm. Genesis either. I was a Nintendo person. Up until the PS2 came out, and then I really convinced I had to convince my parents to get me a PS2, and then uh, didn't have the first Xbox. But by the time Xbox 360 came out, then Microsoft won me over, and I think I've, and I think since the 360, Xbox has been my favorite console. Nice. Nintendo still has it though with the characters. It's just, you know, unless you care about Mario and those guys, I feel like you don't need a Nintendo system. Well, like. Uh, Mario Odyssey is a fantastic game and couldn't recommend it enough. And that's a you know it's a bit of a bummer that um you know. Problem with Nintendo for me, as I told you, is that I'm big into multiplayer games, and yeah. Nintendo does not prioritize its multiplayer uh, online mm. play. I mean, yes, they have great games for if you have everyone in your home, like with the Mario Party games. But mm-hmm. for like online internet play, they just never, never cared. Um, yeah, I don't no, know that's if that's fair. changed, but it still seems to be that way. They just implemented a big online uh, update to Elden Ring, so you can beat the shit out of uh, out of other online players. In that. So maybe that's an impetus for you to 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 try out Elden Ring. Elden Ring doesn't look like it's something for me. Ah, it's so good. I played it so much. <laughs> it looks like a World of Warcraft type deal. Is that what it's like? Uh, not really. I mean, it's an open world game. Do you gotta uh, do you gotta do monotonous shit to level up? No, I mean, like the thing about El- one of the good things about Elden Ring, in fact, is that you don't really you don't really have to grind at all. It's more about uh, you know as you progress through the game, you pretty much just get what you need to level up. Um, it's just got it's got a great story. It's it's it, fun, interesting combat. Um, the the world and the lore and everything is fantastic. It's challenging to a degree. Um, it's good. It's a it's a fantastic game. All right, it just doesn't seem like something that's for me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's totally fair. It's not. My I next, mean, yeah, the next game I want to try but, is uh, I guess I mean, Overwatch Two. That's the next on my list to. Uh, uh, for people who play Overwatch, is it something for a seven-year-old? Is it like cartoony violence, like Fortnite? Oh, it's totally, it's totally cartoony, from what I understand. Okay, because like I can't play Gears of War anymore because I play video games mostly with my son now, and he cannot. Yeah, yeah. he is not allowed to play think, Gears. Of I think War. Overwatch fits that fits that um, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, uh, Eagle Left said, Matt, play Splatoon three. I got my son Splatoon 3 for either Christmas or his birthday. I can't remember. Uh, he likes it. I um, I don't know. I guess I have to, I didn't really give it a chance. I didn't really give it a chance. It's never been a big draw for me. 
I, I don't know. It seems seems okay. Pew pew, uh, paint. Yeah. Oh, it's funny you said pew pew because Bo just uh, left in the comments. We get it, Matt. You like pew pew games. <laughs> um, I mean, I just thought about how one of my favorite games of all time was Warcraft Three. That's not a pew pew game. It's not a pew pew game. The 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 the, the click click game. Yeah. And I don't I don't like Call of Duty games anymore because uh, I was obsessed with Call of Duty Two. And then they changed like the game mechanics after Call of Duty 2. And I could never get into Call of Duty again after it. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about Call of Duty 2 from, what was that, mid-2000s? Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, I'm old. Someone just said uh, playing real guitar is easier for me than playing Guitar Hero. I agree. Oh, I've, I, I, rem I remember when Guitar Hero was big and I played Guitar Hero then. I have not touched a fucking Guitar Hero guitar in like two decades, I would say. Did you ever play, I think it's called Rocksmith, where you plug in a real guitar into it? So it's it's Guitar Hero. But no, because I can't you, play guitar. I couldn't do that. You could you play bass. I play bass, yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, hey, just before I go, I probably should, probably should get going, but you said you were working for a majority report. Are you not working for them Oh, no, I meant like back in the day when I was there five days a week, like that was my day job. You could still oh, find me there on the Thursdays. Like I'm, I'm more of a, I'm more of a, a, a weekly, uh, a weekly uh, contributor now than uh, gotcha. okay. I, like, like, do I get paid? Yeah, but I don't consider it. I'm not working for Sam gotcha. in the same way I did. Maybe if I never worked for him in that way, I would consider what I do now working for him. But because I was in a room with him and Michael Brooks for Monday through Friday, nine to right. five uh, for like five years, I don't consider the uh, hour and a half I do with them every Thursday to be work. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> Man. Miss that guy, Michael. Fire up. Yeah, yeah. Good dude. Uh, really uh, would be... I, I, you know, I often think about like, um, you know, everyone says like, oh man, I wish Michael was here to like, to, um, to, uh, you know, uh, break down how these certain people like Greenwald or Taibi have changed over the years since, you know, Michael was around to have them on his show. And mm -hmm. like the sad reality is like, Listen, Michael was brilliant, and he had a lot of uh, he was growing his fan base, but um, unfortunately, uh, people lionize someone when they pass away, and I feel like Michael's words obviously would not Michael's opinions on them would not have the same uh, gusto. I don't know how to put it if he was saying it if he was here, because people would just view him as oh, it's Michael Brooks of the Majority Report, just like how they call everything anyone related to Sam is like, oh, uh, MSNDC, DNC or whatever. Like they would be undermining Michael for his connection to Sam still, to the, if he Got was it. still here. You know what I mean? Like uh, the, the Michael that uh, he was that good. Uh, and I believe that people should have, you know, uh, viewed his analysis in the way they do now if he was alive. But I feel like a lot of people... Uh, only unfortunately view his analysis in that way uh, because mm -hmm. he passed. Sadly, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Like that happens a lot yeah, with people. Where like, um, it's too bad because yeah, yeah. No, like, they would have been they would have been attacking Michael the same way they attack Sam. It wouldn't have been like, yeah. oh, Michael, Michael feels like Tybee wouldn't have been like, oh, Michael feels this way about me working with Elon Musk. Oh, I really got to contemplate. Oh, uh, oh I feel I feel so I'm so embarrassed and ashamed. No, no, it would have been it would have been like, oh, go back to uh, Sam and the MSND, MSNND, whatever the fuck they call it. What is it? MSNDNC or whatever. That stupid like uh, shit. They try to combine MSNBC and DNC. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. No, I'm they, not. They, I'm not they, would, they would be saying something like that. Um, yeah, no, I see. They would not be That's looking totally at good. his his analysis and his word at the, like, oh, you know, if only he was here. No, they, if he was here, they would have been shitting on him just like they shit on Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's totally fair. 
Hey, man, great talking to you. Yep. Uh, great talking to you as always. Uh, it seems like you come on and we get – it's been everybody to act. Everyone's been – everyone's get, come on this show, brought up like 20 topics and just had me going on rants. So kudos yeah, to all of you wonderful listeners. It's good shit. It's good shit. Um, I'll send you a I'll send you a um, uh, screenshot of that tweet, so you can you know. Oh yeah, definitely. Please send so that can, to me because I want to I want to tweet about it because that's ridiculous. Leverage your power and uh, you know. Your, I can't, your I'm, not, I'm not I'm not promising anything. I'm just saying I'm going to tweet it out. There's nothing really I could do, but I do know that uh, ever since Elon banned me, there's been a few people at Twitter paying attention to what I I tweet. Yeah. You know. <laughs> No problem. No, but right. yeah, I appreciate it. Take care. Peace out. Oh, wait, what time is it in uh, New, or- uh, New Orleans? New Zealand right now. <laughs> I don't know why I said New Orleans. What time is it in New Zealand right now? Uh, it's six minutes past six. AM? Show you out my window. Hold on. You check out this view. Is it AM or PM there yeah. right now? There we go. It's PM, right? That's, 6 uh, PM? That's the Wellington Hub. Yeah, yeah, 6 PM. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's the Wellington Harbor. Shit. Right there. there you go. Damn, maybe maybe New Zealand's the place I should look. Hey. Uh, for my rich person bunker. Oh, like all the other rich people. How, how do you how, – how you excuse me. How are you enjoying all your new rich neighbors, by the way? Everyone sees the uh, buying b- b- bunkers in New Zealand for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually moving house very soon uh, into a bit of a poorer neighborhood, which is, which is yeah, good for me because I want to be paying less rent. Right, but it's still New Zealand, right? It's got to be beautiful, no matter where you yeah, are. Yeah, it's going to be gorgeous. It's right down. It's actually literally on the waterfront, which it's is like oh, I'm I'm, uh, I'm moving nice. to oh, I'm moving to a poorer area right on the waterfront in a fucking <laughs> island. Give me a break. Give me a break. It doesn't matter where. No. Sorry. Jesus Sorry. Christ. <laughs> well, like uh, I said, if you ever want to come up, you get you got a place you can stay. It's like oh, I'm moving to the slums, and then you call in next week. And you're full out bathing suit, holding a surfboard, like, hey guys, check out my bungalow. It's like, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you. It's summer there too, right now, right? Yeah, yeah, we're summer over here. It's fucking hot. How are the winters? Does it get does it get cold? Does it snow? Not in Wellington. There was one year in Wellington where it snowed, but it was freak. It was freak. It just never happens. Um, but it gets wet and cold in Wellington um during during the winter um and it can be pretty unpleasant but it's good it's nice all right right, cool all right man man. enjoy your uh your wednesday night your wednesday night dinner as i'm still trying to finish up there you go (laughs) hey i'm still trying to finish up my tuesday night so enjoy your wednesday night (laughs) It's wild there. time zones, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you the lot of numbers. I'll send them to you. Oh yes, please do. Please <laughs> tell me how the future is. Have a great night. Bye, right dude. Peace out. Bye. All right, I'll do. I'll do one more call really quick. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Matt. It's Dave, it's from, Dave Jamaica. from Jamaica. <laughs> And this is the first time we've spoken since I New met Year. Dave from Jamaica in the flesh just last year, New Year's Eve. We hung out. Uh, he came yeah. to uh, uh, Queens and we got a nice uh, Malaysian uh, lunch. And then Big we. Big uh, fan t- of Papa Richie's now. <laughs> uh, Papa Richie's wonderful, yep. Uh, and yeah, that's. Uh, and we took the train back into the city together. And then we uh, bid each other adieu. So what did, you, what did you end up doing New Year's Eve? Well, me and Rachel did try to go into Times Square. Well, as you said, not possible. <laughs> Every, I warned they were you. Jerking, yeah, they were just jerking us around and like, oh, here we go. Uh, oh, uh, go to 57th Street, go to this street, go to that street. And then when we finally reached the one where we could enter, I said, you can't bring any umbrellas. Because it was raining. I was like, nah. And then me and Rachel just went to a dive bar instead. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. I, I was actually a block away when that um, that guy attacked uh, two cops. And uh, oh. the cops fired their guns at him. Uh, wow. So I, I, I heard all that. I don't know if you 
It was like a big hey, story. You said you heard an explosion, I think. There was a uh, booms, loud booms. Yeah. But uh, again, I want to thank me and Rachel. Want to thank you for inviting us and showing us the some interesting spots in Queen. Oh no, it was my Good. pleasure to to have mm. you uh, to have mm. you uh, it, have you join me for my last lunch of 2022. Oh yeah, it was very, It was pretty fun. So. Uh, to keep with the ethos of the scam economy, maybe you can look into this. This is very interesting. Old school scam. It seems Usain Bolt has lost almost all his money. He, he was investing in a brokerage and he lost about $12.7 million. That's all his money from all his running. How much? Um, I'm going to look it up, but t- I think it's about 12.7 million US dollars. Uh, and, I'm, seeing, uh, I'm seeing 10 million. Right. Well, oh I think that's about, you know, these things are they're kind of wiggly. Yeah, about 10 million. But First of all, I would have assumed, honestly, I would have <coughs> I would assume you'd have got more. Yeah. I would assume he had more. Yeah, I mean, not from the Olympics, but from all the the the, the, the deals. This is Usain Bolt, the fucking like, the 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 cream of the crop in that whole uh, track and field uh, running. Uh, like he is the the runner. I would assume he would have had, I don't know, maybe fifty mil. I don't know. Mm, you would think, but evidently, when he was using that brokerage firm in Jamaica, which is SSL. Um, that's most of what he had. Um, rumors are he has only, he has like about $2,000 to his name. So, yeah, I mean, the thing with someone like him is if he wants to, he could easily uh, that's why sign, some, so- sign some deals and, and make some money so he doesn't only have $2,000. I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah, it's very easy for someone like him to, uh, I don't want to say easy, but because uh, it's still work so involved, cheesy. it's very yeah. easy for him to get the opportunities to, to make back ass. that money. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> but it was evidently a legit brokerage, but um, somebody in there was just stealing money from doing fraud with um the various accounts. I think it and thirty other people lost a lot of cash. But I'm waiting for more details because they're kind of being a little. I want to know what this person was actually doing. To, um, because right. from what I understand, it's like uh, in a retirement investment. That lost so he lost his money, and so I'm curious how that's going to play out. But other than that, um, the I was going to speak about the Twitter thing now. I, I noticed a few days before Elon said the policy change that has people been noticing when they go on Twitter, they're getting a lot of very unusual suggested tweets. Yes, yes. Listen, very- I, I wish I, I wish I was getting fed right wing bullshit. I would prefer mm-hmm. it to what I'm getting now. I would much mm-hmm. prefer have a fucking feed full of Ben Shapiro, Charlie Kirk, and Jordan Peterson. So at least it would be stuff relevant to shit that I would like knock and make fun of. Right. All I get now in my feed are bullshit vi- viral videos of the most mm-hmm. b- b- ridiculous n- shit that has n- no interest in me whatsoever. Oh, I guess you're lucky. I get the right wingers and... That I I'm prefer it. interested, and I get a lot of anti-vax propaganda. And, and that one I wouldn't. Yeah, propaganda. that one's lame. Um, I yeah, mean, I it mean, is like after it, I, the thing is the volume of suggested tweets have increased dramatically. So you like you'd yes. have your regular timeline, and then you'd have a suggested tweet. See, so see, every three thing. regular things are and, a suggested tweet. And we don't have the choice either. Like he says, he keeps saying, oh, the following tab is there so you can see the chronological order of the people you follow's tweets. But that's not what I want. I don't want the chronological order because people tweet, even the people I follow tweet shit I have no interest in sometimes. The old old For You page was amazing at Mm -hmm. just showing you exactly what you wanted to see from the Mm -hmm. people you were following and the stuff they would retweet 
And sometimes they would suggest to you a tweet that your followers, that the, that the people you follow liked. Like, oh, you know, so-and-so who you follow just liked this tweet. Check this out. Now, mm -hmm. though, it's tweets that have no connection to anyone you know just right. uh, suggested to you. Feed. Yeah, that's the shit. I, I, I don't want a chronological feed of just the people I follow in the order they're tweeting. I don't want this new bullshit where I'm getting fed shit that I have no connection to. I want the old algorithm back that showed me what I wanted to see from my the people I followed and mm -hmm. they threw in some tweets from people that the people I followed interacted with. That's all I want. Show, or it used to show things that were legitimately popping off, right? Something that was actually Yeah, like I would always Discord. just get like my my mm -hmm. feed was mm -hmm. perfect. I would get the the viral tweets from the people I follow. Mm -hmm. I would get the popular tweets that they interacted with. Mm -hmm. And then every now and then they would suggest me something that was just like, you know, big across the board. Now it's just random it's just garbage. Bullshit. Garbage. Garbage. Mm -hmm. Viral garbage videos. The most the bottom of the barrel garbage bullshit. It, it weird because i i thought i was going crazy because sometimes i just scroll through to kind of kill some time at work and then i'm noticing why are these tweets coming up i don't i don't even interact with right wingers that much and then later to hear most bragging about well any he's going to he's basically directing the feed to show people what they're definitely not interested in I find so bizarre because that's basically what he's saying. He's designing it, the feed, so it causes people to react more negatively by showing them what they're just definitely not interested in. So it would cause people to want to dunk more, you know, or whatever the case I may mean, be. Maybe, maybe I need to get back. Like, I listen, ever since this, my past couple of weeks have been completely like I've barely been on Twitter, I've lost followers because I've barely tweeted. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I got suspended December 15th, reinstated, and then suspended again for not deleting mm -hmm. the tweet. And then, so I was off of Twitter for like a week. And then when I came back on, it was the holidays. So, you know, Christmas was right there. So I was already ready to like barely be on because I wanted to spend that week mostly doing stuff with my kids. And then the week after that, I was busy with CES and then the week after that was like my first week back, like physically working, like, like, like not at the office, but essentially my work at home office. So I've barely been on fucking Twitter and to go from, and like all these changes to Twitter happened in these couple of weeks spans where I've barely been on there. So like to go from like the old Twitter to like this new shit, I'm still like trying to fucking wrap my head around it. Like it's so different. He, he, that's why I, f I found it so striking because the change was so sudden. It wasn't even subtle. I think, no, I think about it. What I remember, I know I joke about Twitter dying, but what's really going to cause it to die is this very making it s annoying people off the platform, basically. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> because I don't want this crap on my timeline. Some of this stuff, those, I'm not interested in reacting to. And it just keeps on coming and it just doesn't go away. So I find that particularly, I don't know, but, you know, what can you do? He owns it, so he's right. going to run it into the ground. Also, but, I want to say him suspending me when he did was mm -hmm. the absolute worst time for me to get suspended in, in, from the perspective of me being able to take advantage of it. I got like <laughs> a, a, a few new patrons, a bunch of new Twitch subscribers, uh, you know, but I couldn't follow up with the content because I had already planned to be to take a a, short, you know, a break for like a week and then to do CES. So I fucking missed out being able to take advantage of all those people. And like now I'm back to like the old amount of Twitch subscribers, like like you know Twitch Prime mm -hmm. subscribers. Lost a bunch of patrons because I wasn't able to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 
convince all those new people that I do a bunch of content usually and they just happen to join like during the one week where I did nothing and then another week where I just was able to do one show like usually I'm giving you I, I rarely take time off and they joined the worst possible time why couldn't he have suspended me when I was like doing my normal schedule and everything and people were able to get the the full we're on BBC <laughs> yeah no that was good but that's that's got a short shelf life you know I know, I know. Uh, but knowing Elon and how sensitive he is, I'm pretty sure he'll ban you again for doing something not bad. I got to get back on my game. I've barely been tweeting. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely, he's finding new ways to break the platform. I've, I've just, I just find this, and it's not even the right wingers I like dunking on. I mean, we're talking some weirdos nobody heard about, especially with the anti-vax stuff. We're talking people who probably look if they get they, they look if they act, get over a thousand likes for some of their crazy shit. Or it's very cloistered, right? We're talking some real nobodies and then I'm seeing a lot of stuff where you look at this girl She's screaming for help because she's getting a COVID shot or some weird shit like that. And those are the suggested tweets. And I'm saying, what is going on here? Why are they suggesting this to me? <laughs> but right. I guess he, he has his agenda. <laughs> oh, one. Ah, oh, here's the thing that keep. You ever heard of this idiot Twitter handle called N Wokeness? That one is getting pushed on me very hard. <laughs> And it's basically like a libs of TikTok, prop would probably not as bad, but basically that mold of content. Look what libs are doing now, type of shit. And I don't know. I've I just find it strange that this one very not mad big billionaire has kind of slowly wrecking the quote unquote town square he supposedly wants to prop up. <laughs> yeah. In very unique ways. <laughs> but anyway, Matt, it's getting super late and you need to go to bed. Uh, so I I'm do, going to yes. let you go. I so thanks for having me on. So and again, talk. thanks for showing me and Rachel Town and very tasty pleasure. donuts and all that. So thanks a lot, Matt. Later. Have a good night. All right, folks, that is the show for tonight. Um. Uh. Oh, I didn't do any of the usual. Oh, maybe the super chats, and the Twitch stuff. Uh, Renee, how about the WWF? That would end the confusion. Uh, Kruherx says the super chat. R.I.P. Jay Briscoe. Check out the dog collar match, and Kowalski with two super chats. Food will run out next Thursday. Good luck, folks. What? What? What are you talking about? And uh, Kowalski with another super chat. OG Binder, nostalgic for the OG Twitter algorithm. Yeah, I am. What are you talking about, uh, Kowalski? Food will, all the food will run out? We're going to have no more food? Uh, over on Twitch. Uh, Robot Monkey Cat, resubscribe to Tier 1. Subscribe for 14 months. Whoa. Robot Monkey Cat says, welcome back. Ravana with a raid. Oh, yeah, I thanked Ravana earlier. I want to thank Ravana again. Uh, Ponderosapine, resubscribe for one month at tier one. Subscriber for 12 months. Hi, someone with heavy food sensory issues here. Frosted mini wheats are one of the only things I can actually consume regularly and not get sick from. Guilting people who can't support boycotts is ableist as fuck, but y'all aren't ready for that conversation. Who's. There's a boycott against. Frosted mini wheats? I fucking love frosted mini wheats. I'm not joining no boycott against frosted mini wheats. What is the boycott against frosted mini wheats about? It's copy pasta. Oh, what 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 is it? I missed it. 
I mean, I know what copy pasta is, but this was a thing. This is an old thing. I never came across this. I never came across this one, honestly. But I love frosted mini wheats. A social communist resubscribe for one month at tier one and subscribe for 10 months. Thank you. Farrah Doll, subscribe with Prime. Thank you so much. Artistic Simplicity, resubscribe for one month at Tier 1, subscribe for five months. Happy to help with any artwork if you ever need it. Oh, really? I don't know if you're still on, but I would, yeah, sure. I'll always take uh, take the, the, uh, the, the nice offer. All right, folks, if you can... Um, if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, be sure to connect your Amazon Prime account and uh, gift me your Twitch Prime subscription if you can. Uh, it's free for you and gives me money from Amazon. Twitch.tv slash And of course, if you can, the most important thing you can do is go to Patreon.com slash and subscribe to the show there because your monthly paid subscription really helps me grow this show we got really close to 400 patrons uh when elon musk banned me and then i had to take i had already planned that time off and we're still fairly close much closer than we were um before elon banned me but not as close as we were i think we're about 15 patrons away from 400 right now so if you could become a Patreon subscriber, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, what do I do with your Patreon money? I grow the show. I really want to get to a point where this show is sustainable enough for me to bring people on board. Um, you've already done a fantastic job helping me by buying me uh, new equipment. That's why audio and video sound so good. Um, I need the help in terms of bringing someone on to help me put the shows together, edit clips. Um, that's the biggest help I could use right now, but that requires me being able to, you know, hire someone I'm like a freelance basis. I'm not looking to hire full time. If that's not where I'm at right now, that'd be great if I could it, but I'm at that point yet. Um, but once I could do that, I think we could get a lot more stuff out there. And when we get a lot more stuff out there, clip wise, I think, we will grow even more. Um, so yeah, patreon.com slash Matt Binder. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this post show with you all. Got me back in the mode. This is the first Scam Economy post show since December. Uh, I did Doomed last week, so it's not the first stream I've done of the year. Um, gonna get back into, obviously, doing more than one stream a week. Uh, I was just, you know, like I mentioned, the week off, the CES trip was sick all last week. Still not feeling hundred percent yet, but I'm I'm you you could see I'm doing the show. Uh, so I look forward to really getting back into the swing of things over these next couple of days. Um, so uh, I will let you know about when the next episode of Doom, the next episode of Scam Economy, is. Follow me on Twitter at Matt Binder, um, and yeah. Uh, I got to catch up on so many emails, so many Patreon messages. I'm super behind. I was already behind, but now I'm even more behind. Uh, but I swear I'm going to get my act together and get this shit together. I promise. Uh, I know people have been messaging me about shit that's important. Um, I will get to them ASAP. Uh, all right, folks. Uh, have a great rest of your night. And I will see you all next time on either Doomed or Scam. Uh, wait, was there anything else I wanted to say? Oh, who should I, <laughs> who should I raid on Twitch? Ponderosapine literally knows what I was going to say about the Twitch thing. Who should I raid on Twitch? Levelhead, haven't ever... Rated level head. Level head? Who's this? Let's see.
I've never rated this person. So you know what? Why not? <clears throat> Let me uh, raid Levelhead. All right, folks. I will see you all next time on either Doomed or Scam Economy. <clears throat> mm <clears throat>